Greetings, everyone. Peace. Hotep. Um, all of those good things. And so um, it is so good to be back here at my Odd Speaks. I know it has been a little while, but uh, just, you know, it's time. So I thought that it was no better time to come than today. We are getting close to the new season, which is summer right around the corner. So I am um, Ma'at. And for those of you who may be new to the channel, but I want to thank everyone who is stopping on by this evening for this conversation. And to anyone who may catch this afterwards, um, I am Ma'at. So before we get started here, I just want to remind everyone that here at Ma'at Speaks, that Ma'at Speaks is a channel that is aimed to demonstrate how to maintain, uphold, and build a code, a code and culture through the principles of Ma'at. So as you join today's conversation, as you watch this video, whenever you see this video or this live, just make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already subscribed to this channel. And also share this conversation or any other content that you see on the channel. Remember that here at My Ad Speaks, you can also uh, you can also support the channel. So I'm going to show you a few ways that you can support the channel. So one, you can support just by liking and subscribing to the channel. You can support by sharing this content, but also you can support the channel through my cash app, which is my Ad Speaks, my Venmo, my Ad Speaks, or PayPal, which is Gen Health Revolution. You can also buy me some tea, which I love, at buy me a coffee um, here, um, slash my Ad Speaks. And then also remember, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Generational Health Revolution or go on over to my website, which is generationalhealthrevolution.com. So thank you all for being here today. And shout out to, uh, let's see here, shout out to TWP Popcorn. It's always good to see you. You're always so supportive of the channel. So I thank you for being here. And to my love here, thank you. Um, babe, for being here and, you know, handling the chat. And uh, let's see, we have Natasha Jones in the building. Peace to you, Natasha. It's always good to see you. And so without further ado, we are going to get started. I'm not going to keep um, anyone waiting for long. I want to just make sure that I am careful with everyone's time. And so before we begin, I just want to uh, everyone to just remind you that as you enter, prepare to open your minds, prepare um, to get deep in the conversation. But, you know, sometimes we jump to defend what only what we know and forget that there is so much that we don't know. So here at Ma'at Speaks, we want to induce a different perspective so we can consciously, consciously heal ourselves and name ourselves in a way that is native to who we are. So I started this channel so that we could heal ourselves, our community and build with one another so that we can create a world that our children and future generations do not need to heal from. So we are going to begin. So as you can see that we are going to be talking about on submission now this conversation um, started on uh, my dear brother's channel, AK on Fire, who I'll bring up in just a moment. He has agreed um, to not only allow us to kind of um, review some of the things that we spoke about on that particular live, but he also agreed to be part of this conversation today. So I am thankful for him. I also have uh, my dear brother and sister, brother Talawa and sister um, uh, they're going to be joining the conversation today um, as the married couple on the bunch, but just bringing a different perspective as well. Um, and then my sister Hanifa will also be joining the conversation as well. 
Um, and, you know, if you are uh, not new to the channel, you know, my sister always drops some jewels. So with that being said, I am going to bring up um, my panel and we're going to jump right into this conversation and uh, try to be as quick as we can. We're not going to get through the whole live, um, but we will uh, touch on some points brought up during that live conversation on my brother's channel, AK on a AK on fire. So I'm going to go ahead, bring up AK on fire. Thank you for the brother for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invite. My aunt. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. And then I have my dear brother and sister, brother Talawa and sister Ama. Peace to you. All right. What's up? Hello. hello. Thank y'all for being here. I appreciate y'all for being here. Um, and I think uh, she's she'll be here in a moment, but uh, Hanif will be here in a moment. But we'll go ahead and get the conversation started. And so um, we do. Uh, I always enjoy um, Abe's perspective um, when it comes to how he navigates the conversations on his channel. I think they're always um, very respectful and. Um, Maybe other characters, I have issues with. but I never have, uh, you know, issues with how So we're going to um, get started. I'm going to share, um, start sharing uh, some of the live and just jump right in. And I want to introduce my sister Hanifa to the stage here. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Thank hey, you. Hey, Thank Hanifa. you for coming through. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, hear you. I'm fine. I'll okay. mute. <laughs> okay. So um, again, uh, so that we can kind of honor everyone's time, I do want to get the car. I don't want to be here for hours and hours. So just as we discuss everything, um, let's just kind of keep our, I guess, our comments concise <laughs> so that we can get through um the conversation okay so we're gonna um begin i'm gonna start kind of from the beginning of the live and so let me start sharing my screen here let's see here y'all one moment oh it's already here what am i doing okay y'all one moment All right, I think we can all see that. Okay, so let's just start here. Um, with this, um, with this disagreement with the word submit, because I don't feel like you're the only sister who has a problem with the word submit. Um, so I want to go ahead and start with you um, on this issue of submission. First, please tell me what what does submission mean to you. Well, just when you look at the etymology of submission, uh, basically it's, it means to yield to a higher power, right? Higher, higher authority. Mm -hmm. And so if you subscribe to like a hierarchical position in your relationship, mm -hmm. then you, you, I guess you will say that that is a part of your dynamic in your relationship. Now, I don't believe that uh, you come into the world submissive. I think that submission is something that you have to get someone to do. It's, you know, either by force, either by taking away something, you know, uh, that's how you get your children to quote unquote submit, right? Like a child, I have a, currently have a toddler <laughs> and uh, he is not submissive at all, right? Like in order to get him to quote unquote submit, you have to do something in order, whether that is like some type of punishment. Um, most of us grew up with that being a part of, you know, whether it's spanking, whoopings, all those types of things. So when I hear, you know, submission, I don't believe that is a not a uh, quote unquote natural thing. I think most women who talk about being submissive are not actually um, being submissive. They talk a good game, 
but I don't think they actually, from the core of who they are, are actually practicing submissiveness. Now, okay, so I'm going to stop there because I just want us to kind of come to, uh, and I do like, Abe, um, that you do bring up the definition of um, submission eventually, you know, eventually after um, I'm talking and we kind of, we come to an agreement there, right? We come to agreement with parts of um, the word submission, right? Where a uh, yielding to a higher authority. And so I kind of want you uh, to kind of clarify since, you know, uh, just begin with you, Abe, in your under what you would deem as submission and i think i i mean we're all married here on the panel so i think we can kind of um kind of make sure that we're kind of uh making sure that this is along the lines of of marriage so what is submission let's just start with that question what is submission to you abe yeah i was can you hear me because yeah. I can't hear my in my ear. Yeah, so submission to me is is just that yeah, whether you're yielding to a higher authority. And I know uh, listening to the word authority would probably um, uh, make some uh, some you know some folks skin crawl. But uh, in whether it's um, well, I'll just keep it as relationships. So in a relationship where you have um, a number of women who say that they want black men to protect us. Right. Or they want black men to provide. And, and we've all heard a lot of women say that that black men need to protect black women. Right. Uh, in order to to be able to protect black women, um, those black women are going to have to at least submit to um, to the man's protection, to his leadership, to his authority. And so so in that respect, that's what I'm talking about when I say submissive. I'm not when I say submissive, I'm not talking about um, the way you have children submit to their parents. No, it's just like when you have a pilot, you have a pilot and you have a co-pilot. Right. They're both pilots. Um, there, there's sometimes where the co-pilot has to take over for the pilot, but the pilot is responsible for for the plane. And so everybody has to follow under the stewardship of the of the pilot under his or her leadership, because it's not always a he. And so when I talk about uh, submissiveness or submission, I'm talking about it in that respect. Uh oh. Um, am I the only one I can't hear? Her? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, okay. I, I, I'm just going to continue to kind of ask the same question so brother um brother Talawar, can you chime in with that like do you uh kind of agree with that um what is your idea of submission well can you hear me yeah i can hear yeah. you so my idea of submission is yield to a, a higher authority that's pretty much how i've understood submission mm -hmm. okay all right and um, Sister Amon. Yeah, just essentially the same thing. Um, you're kind of, um, you know, you're you're allowing the other person to take charge. Yeah, I think, um, I think, like, I I, wrote, uh, I listened to the, um, the 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 thing that you have on the screen right now, and the lady Mika, she was just saying that submission, it it, it kind of works the same way. Um, like a relationship between a boss and an employee, and I found that I found that kind of interesting. So, yeah, but, I'm gonna get I'm gonna and I'm gonna get to get to that as well because I did. Quite, yeah, I wrote that down as well. Um, and I guess like right now, just um, a, a baseline. So higher authority, Hanifa, can you chime in with um, on that as well? Oh yeah. <sighs> Uh, you're asking for what our, our, our um, understanding of submission is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much to submit to a uh, higher authority. To right. Submit, to submit to leadership okay. of, any, of any sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's uh, continue here. One moment. That is 
the if you go to the etymology of it, that's that's what it is. It's just yielding to a higher power or a higher authority. And if you believe that men are higher power, or higher authority, then, you know, I do believe that there are some women who believe that and do actually submit. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to the word submit, sub, sub, you know, I know we have to navigate the English language. Right. So, you know, I am a word person. I do believe in the frequency of words. Uh, so I do not use the word submit. Submit. I've been married for 15 years. Submission has not been a point in our marriage at all. Even when we were Christians, it was just never a, something that came up. I think men who are constantly throwing the word submission around, it comes from a much deeper place because you have to try to get women to submit. And I think on the other hand, when women are throwing that around, it's, 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 it's a place of wanting to be dominated. And we have to always look at where those things and those ideals come from. So when it comes to the word submission, it's just not a, you know, I have these conversations online, but it's just never been a point in my relationship where submission wasn't, was a, was a thing. Now there are people who will look. Okay. So I'm gonna stop it there. And so I think right now, and I'm not going to go further with what I'm saying right now, but I think at this point, it kind of gets to a point where <laughs> We're kind of, you know, um, disagreeing over the, just the point of using the word, right? So um, I still, to this day, <laughs> to this moment, um, it's just not a, a, a something that I, I, I use, you know? Um, and even when I think of, uh, I think later on in the conversation, when uh, Rico talks about using the word yield, you know, which in essence is the same thing. And then I even talk about the characteristics. So to me, when we start evolving the conversation, it's more about um, choosing the right person and the actual um, characteristics within uh, that person. Like, do you have the characteristics to be um, a husband or a wife, you know, to develop and to evolve your relationship? And so with, with the, the, the word, you know, um, submit, I would like to go to, um, brother, um, uh, I'm sorry, brother, tell why sister, Amma. so is the word submit submission? Is that, um, a word that you, I guess you use within the dynamics of your relationship? It's unmuted. Good, yes. She's asking both of us. Well, <laughs> no, not at all. It just doesn't come up, you know. It just, it's just not a, a, a thing. It's more like a collaboration. I like that word. You know, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like, um, like I'm like, oh my gosh, submission, and I, you know, I just, mm -hmm. my skin crawls at the thought of the word. It's just, it just never comes up. You know, it's just, it's not. We collaborate on different things and for things that he knows more about than I do, you know, I I confide in him and you know we we listen to each other, but there's it's not like a it's not like a power struggle. Like mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it's not an employee boss like dynamic. I, I feel like that that can be a that can be a little toxic. You know, the wife is the employee and the Mm -hmm. so a, I, vice versa. that seems a little a little odd to me yeah so i like what you said about um because i do i use the word um collaboration often um within the dynamics of um our relationship and our marriage and i think sometimes uh when we say that or when certain people hear that it sounds like um, one that we do have a, a problem with the word submission, but I think also that it, it sounds like, I don't know, it, it's almost like it's equated. You know what? I just want to ask, um, cause I know a, we kind of went back and forth with that. So what do you feel when you hear the word collaboration versus submission? Um, I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't think much of it. I mean, 
yeah, you collaborate, but even there are even times when you collaborate where you still um, uh, possibly submit to the direction of the other person. Maybe the other person has better ideas and you yield and submit to um, to that person's uh, acumen uh, when it comes to whatever it is you're you're, you're dealing with. So uh, the thing is, I, I don't know what what's the cause of the reticence or disdain for the word submit i mean most of us almost all of us submit to something in our daily lives um i, I think the issue is uh and and you you said it in that, that that video there was one point in the show where you said that that this thing is about dominance and so to me i think you associate the word um, submission with dominance, right? And you made a great point in talking about how, you know, uh, when, when it came to the feminists and how the feminists are wanting to be men and, and, and they, they want to, they once felt dominated. So now they want to dominate. And you said, black men, why do you want to dominate black, black women, black women? Why do you want to do dominate black men? We should be working together. And I agree with you. There's nothing. I mean, what you said was totally true. All I'm saying is that, um, whether it comes to work, whether it comes to a project where you collaborate, there's going to be a point in time where you have to submit to the leadership or the acumen of someone else. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. Most of us don't talk about submission because it's just something that we do naturally anyway. So it's not something that's really spoken, spoken about. OK, so um, it's just like. Okay, I, I'm going a, I'm to a leave it there for a moment. But because, uh, Hanif, I want you to chime in to that, um, with that as well. Um, the idea of um, naturally, like a, a natural submission, because I kind of don't know if I believe it's a natural, you know, if we have a, like a natural submission. Um, I understand how we how we kind of use it in a sense, right? Like um, there are things in the, the the world or whatever. I I just think that things work in harmony with one another for the most part. Um, and so when something becomes unnatural to you, right? Like when something is not natural to your to 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 what you do. So for example. I think that a lot of, um, uh, I'm not going to say a lot, but I think sometimes people in the North can behave differently than people in the South, just because of, you know, just where you are in the, in the, in the country, you're going to behave differently because you were raised differently. Right. So, um, one of the things that is brought up a lot in these conversations is, um, like a woman bringing, uh, a man a plate of food, right. So if you did not grow up in a certain part of the world or country, or that was not a part of your culture, that's not going to be natural to you. So then you are going to want to coerce that person to do something that may not feel natural to them. Um, I don't think that's the same as someone naturally um, doing something because it creates a harmonious balance. Uh, can you speak on that for me, Hanifa? So I'm trying to follow the question. Um, can you tell me what your question, can you summarize your yeah, question? So it's, um, and it's just kind of um, going based off of what uh, Abe just said about all of us kind of naturally submitting. Okay. And, I, and I understand that to me, the conversation, right, is not even about the word submission. It's about, you know, us getting past the word so that we can actually talk about the dynamics in, a, in the, an actual relationship. But I think a lot of times we use, we don't, um, and, I, and we're going to talk about what, how we actually define the word, but hmm. you believe that like submission in the way that it's used is actually kind of natural or innate to most people. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and skirt around that question a little bit <laughs> because here's, here's what I know. Here's what I know. This conversation, not this conversation, these conversations around submission has everything to do with women. Let's be clear. 
everything to do with women submitting. It has nothing to do with human, like what we do as human beings. That's what these conversations, these conversations are very specific to women. And if we want to be even more specific, black women's inability to submit to who? Black men. Can we just start there and be honest? The other things that come in is where someone is trying to drive their point so much that we're willing to resort to, well, actually, all of us submit. Actually, you submit to your boss. That's the only time. The only time that that comes up as far as men submitting is when somebody's trying to convince somebody else why submission is natural to all of us. But the conversation is not about men. It is about women. So we now are really having a conversation as to, is it natural for women? Let's be clear, because that's really what we're trying to get to. Is it natural for women to submit? We're just tossing men in there just for the sake of conversation. <laughs> that's really not what this is about. It's a specific to women. You will never see a title on YouTube or anywhere else that says, why don't men submit to women? You will never see a title that says, is it natural for men to submit to women? You will never see a title that says, should black men submit to black women? No, it's very specific to women, if we can start there. And the reason why it's, it's, it's specific to women is because it is rooted in Christian dogma, period. And anyone that understands Christianity understands that woman plays second fiddle to men. Women have a second class citizen in a sense. And I agree with Abe to where there are some people who might take it even to the extreme. Like he made a point to say, and I'm glad he did. He was like, that's not how I see submission. Not like that. You get what I'm saying? But when you talk to a lot of men, unless you have these level conversations to where you're able to dive deep, it comes off like, well, if, if you're born a woman, you, uh, you should naturally submit. And because you don't naturally submit, if you don't, then something is biologically or psychologically wrong with you. So this is where we get into black women being damaged in a sense. You get what I'm saying? Like all oh, black women, because, because you know, we are monolith and everything as black women. That's, that's what we do. We come from the same experiences, the same backgrounds, the same upbringing. We believe the same thing. Right, simply because we have a vagina and we have black melanated skin, which is false. So at the end of the day, you're asking me really, is it is it natural for black women? Is it natural for women to submit? And I'm going to say it probably is for some women, and it probably isn't for others. And I think that we all did not, we were not born in a vacuum. We have experiences, we have culture, we have um uh belief systems. Uh, and I'm glad you brought up culture because here's the thing. People have to understand that there are some things in American culture that are offensive that are not offensive in other cultures. So what does that mean? If it's not the natural order of the day for women, that means that the men in that culture are also not offended by it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? That's how culture works. It's saying that, well, this is how they do things over here culturally. So if the men show up a certain way, you know, the woman, let's say we, let's say there's a culture where men greet women by smacking their ass. Okay. Let's just say that. I'm giving an example. Mm -hmm. Now, me personally, you can't smack my ass. That culture, I might go there. Not even my husband can smack my ass in public. It's just, I, you, you to me, something is just, I don't like it. Okay. So let's say I go to that culture and that's how they greet women. They're just smacking women asses. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I'm trying to convince the woman of that culture how inappropriate that is because it's inappropriate in my culture. So now I want them to be offended like I am, right? But that's also how Christianity works. And this is this, this idea of submission is very much rooted in Christian dogma. Is this idea that our way is the best way and our way is the only way and our way is the natural order of the day. And if you don't do it, something is wrong with you. And so when you have women who are saying, talking about submission, you have to understand how they see submission. To be submissive to your husband is obedient to a lot of Christian women. It's a benevolent thing to do. Mm. It's almost like if you don't do it, you're in sin. So it's the conversation. I'm actually notice why this conversation is difficult for me to have sometimes, because I think that you have to exist in a certain paradigm 
to really like engage in it. And I, I, I'm so far removed from that paradigm, right? That the, 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 the conversation sometimes is like, why does that matter so much? Just work together. Just love and respect each other mutually. Because Abe is right. When it's time for a man to, to, to protect, you have to submit to that protection. I think all women do that to a certain extent, and, unless you want to get your head slapped off. Okay. If it's a space where it's like, I'm going to step back and let my husband do that. Yes. But is that a role that he occupies 24 seven? Does he occupy all knowledge of the universe? Is he omnipresent? Can he do all things? Do he have all knowledge? Do he have all strengths? Do he have all talents? Do he have all skill sets? The answer is no. So the woman is sometimes going to have those things that the man, now this is where we talk about the man, is going to have to fall back and say, my wife is better at banking. My wife is better at, at, at um, organizing the household. My wife is this. So yes, in theory, in theory, we all submit in some capacity, but that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about practically. When we're saying in practicality, what we're saying is women are supposed to submit to men and here is why. And so when you have somebody like me that says, it doesn't matter. People who really believe in that have a hard time receiving and understanding why it doesn't matter and how it's possible for a marriage to even work without submitting to that way of thinking and to that paradigm. So I know I said a mouthful, but it's just, I, I'm like, this is not even what we're like talking about. I am not, I refuse to get into the idea of, oh, well, we, I'm not, in, I am not entertaining that. Mm. We all submit to, I'm not going to entertain that because I know that that's not what this conversation is really, not your conversation, my aunt. I'm saying the conversation around submission, that's not what we're talking about. So we don't even need to introduce that into the conversation because to me, it is dishonest. It is intellectually dishonest to just toss that in there because that is not what we're talking about. That's, that's what I have to say about that. Yeah. So um, before I get back to uh, the live and Hanifa, yeah, you touched on quite a bit <laughs> there. Um, and I do think that one of the things that we when we bring up within these conversations is the whole idea of what that does look like to another person. So I think one of the things um, because I, I think um, for some for most of us, I think most of us. Um, and the women that have spoken here on the panel right now, we have said like, that's not, that's not something that comes up right within our, in, within our relationship. So um, before I move on, cause I want to get brother, um, brother Talawa in on this as well, but Abe, I just want to ask you, so is submission, like is talking about submission, is that something we, you think that we still need to be talking about or can we go down another path now are we are we do we still need to talk about the actual actually submitting wait you know? hey, hey before you answer that let me just point out my aunt mm -hmm. Abe did say Abe did mm -hmm. say that it doesn't come up in anybody's relationship as well he says that he did say that okay. and also someone said it in the comment that it's not something that comes up in in their relationships i just want to point that out right well, well i had a question oh. um yeah. Um, Sorry. Can you hold your question for one moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, Abe, if it doesn't come up in, in relationships, why are we still discussing submission? Uh, you're on mute. Okay. The reason why we're discussing submission or we, we, we've been talking about it for as long as, as we have I think is the complete opposition to the word. I mean, the, for something that is so natural, right? Um, and whether we're in New Orleans uh, during the time of Katrina, whether there's an earthquake or there's a, a hurricane, I, I promise you uh, a lot of women will be submitting to the authority and protection uh, of a man who can guarantee their protection. I, pr I promise you that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, in relationships, 
is something that occurs naturally. Men submit to women all the time. Like, w- women are nurturers. Uh, you know, children get their emotional intelligence uh, from 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 their mother, right? So these are things that that men we acknowledge. We when they're kids, we don't know what to do. We look at you with, uh, because we're submitting to you to your to your knowledge and your ability, right? To 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 nurture the children. It's it's, it's something that happens um, uh, both ways, and so. I don't I don't know exactly. Um, well, let me back up. I, I'm saying the reason why so many guys are talking about it is because you hear women say black men don't protect us. You know, black men need to protect black men need to be, provide. You cannot ask somebody to protect you if you would not submit to his protection. You cannot protect something that you can't control. Right. If, if, if you want to be protected by the laws of of this country, you have to submit to the laws of the land. That's just how, how, how it goes. And so it's it's a, it's a small conversation that is is we've made a mountain out of a molehill simply because people uh, find it so uh, objectionable, the, the word so objectionable, which it shouldn't be. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, <laughs> um, yeah, that I, 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 I won't say too much. I just think that. We're making a mountain out of a molehill because um, we we so many people take objection to the word submissive when it, uh, submission when it's something that we do naturally in our life anyway. Well, and I I, I guess like I I just don't sometimes I don't understand because if we're naturally doing it, so you brought up like Katrina, right? So you're saying a woman is going to naturally submit to that to that man's protection. So that means that she's going to automatically do it. If she needs protection in a tragedy or in a traumatic situation and she's going to naturally do it, then what are we, you know, what are we talking about? Because she's naturally going to do it, right? Right. Uh, part of the problem is I, I th- it has become a buzzword on, um, on, 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 on social media. Uh-huh. And I think when it comes to the women, I think a lot of sisters find it objectionable that you have men that are, are really not even, I, I don't want to say not worthy of submitting to, right? You, you, you can't be a man who, who, who does not believe that you should provide and protect for a woman or a man who doesn't believe you have any responsibility to lead your, your family. Yeah, I mean, as a man, your, your responsibility is to protect your family and keep your family together at all costs. And if that's not your mindset, then how is it that you expect a woman to submit to you? It's like you're expecting women to be traditional, to embrace this traditional role when you don't have a traditional mindset yourself. And so I think that that's where the problem lies. And so where you have so much pushback from some of the some of the sisters out there that are like, like, you know, and they just they just go all the way with it when it comes to submission. But I, I think that that's where the that's where the uh, the genesis of a lot of this pushback uh, comes from, is that they, some of the guys who are talking about submission uh, shouldn't be talking about it. It's nuanced, and I think there's even an unpacking that has to happen amongst black people about that word traditionalism, right? What is that? Like, okay. what are we talking about when we say that? Like, it's just, it's such a loaded, it's really not a, a Mount Hill, um, a, the conversation is very loaded. I think that we're trying to have it um, in a very black and white way. You know what I'm saying? In a very, um, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be. And if you're a woman, because now you're questioning women's, I mean, you're, you're questioning a woman's womanhood when, you know, it's almost like this is what a real, just like what, what when women do, where it's like, this is what real men do. It's really the same conversation. But when we talk about traditionalism, it's even a whole separate conversation. What do we mean by that? as black people. So I, j- I just wanted to just inject that part as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I want to go ahead and get to um, Sister uh, Amma's question. Um, so yeah, so I just want to know, like, what are some ways that people naturally submit? <laughs> like, what, what are, like, if it's not, not a tragedy, not just, just every day in life, like you wake up in the morning, you go to work, you come back home to your spouse, just a just a regular day. Like what yeah. is what are some natural ways that people oh, that's, say? A, that's a great question. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on that. And um before we because I want I'm gonna ask everybody that question because it's something that my uh husband said when we were talking about this. And one thing that he said because a lot of times what happens is 
is that when we get into when people, especially, I mean, I've heard this before. I remember uh, a church we went to years and years ago. And one of the guys said that he told his wife when they were arguing that you're not submissive enough, right? So what happens is when you do get into argument, when people get into arguments with their spouses, and most of the time, where is it coming from? Women are not saying to their men, you're not being submissive enough. This the men saying to the women that you're not being submissive enough because we a lot of men don't want. And this goes back to some of what because, you know, when I was on your on your show, a it was a very it was a very um, clear different to me. It's a difference between how you respond to something and then um, some of the other men respond. So I'm not going to say any names, but how some of the other men respond. It's the more of a, I want you to sit down and shut up kind of thing, right? It's not a collaboration. What I say goes, right? So we cannot actually say that submission does not come up in in, in these conversations within spouses because most people, going back to what Hanifa said, within, the relig within with religion, within the Christian dogma, mm. it's preached from the pulpit to mm. submit, it's not very much preached that submit to one another. That scripture doesn't come up a lot. It's the, the scripture submits, you know, why submit to your husbands. So that's where we're coming from with these conversations. Um, but I do want to, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you respond, Ava, yeah. but I, and then I got to get to. No, it, it, it'll be real quick. It'll be, okay, okay. I, I, I think when it comes to that, I think people use, um, um, submit um, I don't know as a proxy it's like they conflate uh, submission and cooperation right and so I think that's that's more of what it is is that you have some people who are not being cooperative like there's always pushback against what the other is trying to do and so um, they're using the word uh, submit rather than um, being cooperative yeah we could argue that or we could argue that some when we get into when when black women get into arguments with their men. Now, I'm not saying like black women are not, you know, we're not saying that they're they're um, that they that there are some women that are not out of line. I'm just saying within the context of relationships, a lot of time that is used because there are times during arguments where you don't want that you and then you equate it to another culture you say black women especially when we're talking about black women here in the united states black women are not submissive like those asian women like those white women right mm -hmm. like that is the conversation that ends up coming up we have what passport bros now because why because the when black women here in the united states are not submiss submissive enough right so those are the conversations that are typically had but going back to sister alma's question i want to ask you because i i'm, I'm i feel like it may mo more than likely um <laughs> be directed towards you um abe but her question again uh let me get back to the question is what are ways that people naturally submit within the context of relationships so she said every day what does everyday submission look like And that's directed to you, Abe, because I, I think that was something that you did say. Yeah, I, I think I, I thought I brought it up uh, when, when I said uh, when it comes to like nurturing um, the kids. I mean, mothers are are probably going to be a little bit. They're, they're a lot better than than uh, fathers when it comes to nurturing the kids. And I know some people may find offense to it when you say that, hey, you know, mothers are more nurturing and, and kids get their um, emotional intelligence for, from the mothers. But that's traditionally how it's been. I, I think that is an example of men yielding uh, or submitting to uh, a woman's knowledge when it comes to child rearing. Um, I think when it, when children are naturally older, especially when you have boys, um, boys, they buck. You know, they, they get to 11 or 12 years old and they start they start bucking the authority of their mother. And they buck in ways with their mothers that they would not necessarily do, would do with their fathers, right? And so, um, uh, at a certain point, uh, some wives, 
I don't know, uh, basically let the father uh, uh, handle the kids as they get older. So, I mean, whether you want to call it submission, it, I, I, I feel it's, you know, you're yielding to the man's um, um, ability to rear the kids as they get older. So I, I think there's a there's a there's a flip when they when their kids are younger. It's more on the mother. And when the kids get older, it's more on the father, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let's say kids are not in the picture, Abe. Then what does submission look like if there's no kids there? It's just the the man and the woman. They haven't had kids yet. Okay, so um, uh, an example would be, let's say, so if you have a woman who wants to go out and she wants to dress a certain way and her husband is, is telling her or her boyfriend is telling her that... Um, don't don't dress this way. You you dress provocatively. You're going to um, you're going to elicit negative attention, right? Um, or he says, "Hey, don't go down a certain a certain street." I'm I'm just giving you just I'm just making up an example, right? Um, a woman. I'm I'm trying to word it correctly where I, <laughs> where it won't uh, uh, cause people to take offense, but but. Some women would, would naturally yield or submit to their husband's um, um, to their husband's viewpoint on that or, or his position on that, and some and some won't. Um, when it comes to to women, you have some women who are married and who may have the position that hey, look, um, you're married now, you can't go hang out with your with your single friends because you don't. You know, you have a family. If you're going to have friends, it would make more sense to have more married friends. And if you did, you have your single friends, you can't do the things with your single guy friends that you did prior to being married. So, I mean, and when you have men um, who accept that and agree with that, I think they are submitting to their wife's position, even though they may not naturally um, agree with it, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. And so what, uh, since that was your question, Sister uh, um, Amma, how do you feel about that in you know, particular as far as like everyday submission? Um, I, I, in some way, it seems unclear, but I, I, don't know. I don't know. So Brother Tyler, I want to get you in on, on that then. So... What is before we move on to the to the next to the next um, section of the, the video? Um, do you do you believe um, in this sense of a natural a natural kind of condition? And um, and then I would like to even for you you know to touch on the cultural cultural piece as well. Okay, wait. You can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let's we'll do that. So I think something earlier that was said that was important, I think Hanifa said, brought up um, culture earlier. Um, some cultures do X and some cultures do Y, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I wanna kind of emphasize that point because I think that's very important. And going from that, I wanna say that black people, given our conditions, we have what I call a crisis of ideological diversity in that we're in an internal war, tug of war between European things and African things. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes up in the ways that we discuss relationships. And sometimes we don't realize that there's ideological differences in how we see relationships. Like when we say, okay, I want a traditional woman, usually we're thinking in a Judeo-Christian sense of traditional. Mm -hmm. Usually, nine out of 10 times. And I, I don't, the person doesn't say it, but because of, you know, the kind of work I do, I know it without thinking. I kind of make the calculation and say, okay, our values are different. So this is not going to be compatible. Yeah, you can't divorce the right. and then from Christianity. But there's another thing too. I think sometimes we're talking about personalities. So some people have more assertive personalities. Some people have more aggressive personalities. Sorry, some people have more passive personalities. Some people have more aggressive personalities. So I think there's that ideological part. Then there's the personality. And then there's what is authority. So going back to the Christian thing, um, I, I, I'm going to have to concede this. But I don't know if you're familiar with... Um, um, 
um, the program, the Jesse Lee Peterson program. Mm -hmm. I, I don't take him seriously. I, I, I just see him as an example. I, I use him in, when I'm teaching as examples of confusion. Okay. So I, I'm like that. I, I'm eccentric. So anyways, he, I think he explains Christian doctrine very well in how it affects us because mm -hmm. I like to make examples with people. I'm very like that. Like where he says, God over man, man over woman, woman over child. I think that kind of gives you the context, mm -hmm. right? For how normally we think about things. Now, what you are seeing, and I think with these social media debates about, you know, relationship issues in the black um, community, and this is, you know, even in the United States and even it's even gone outside of the United States to some extent, you're seeing where we're going away from that kind of conservative Eurocentric bias coming from the Judeo-Christian school. And now we're getting sort of the sort of feminist, um, individualist, liberal politics. And those two things are what we're seeing clashing. Like with the Manosphere, I think they have a very traditional Judeo-Christian sort of lean um, in the way they see relationships. Whereas the women who have a more feminist lean have a liberal kind of Greco-Roman, Amazon inverted way of thinking about relationships. And those two things are clashing. Now, because you know I have an Afrocentric orientation to the way that I do things, I want to be in a relationship with somebody, you know, who's getting who's trying to, you know, de-whitenize and re-Africanize. So how I choose a partner is different. So I just recognize, okay, she doesn't have my value system. Right. I kind of base it more on that than I do, you know. Yeah. I, I don't like the, the diversity, but I, I can't pretend it's not there. I just want to make sure it's clear. I'm not saying ideological diversity is good for us. I'm just saying it's it's I just think it's important to be aware of it. And I'm, I'm sorry, just it's just really difficult for me to understand the concept of submission, the way people talk about it on social media when we live in a society where both black men and black women are quote unquote, submitting to the American empire, though this, this what Greco Roman white empire, we're both, but that's submission, that's submission to a higher, a higher authority. So it's just kind of, it. when you get to black relationships, it's like, you can't even, you can't even get to that until you get to, but we're both submitting to, as, as men, black men and black women are, they submit to this empire. So how can we even deconstruct our own relationships until we address that? You see what I'm saying? It's just, it's kind of unclear. It's just weird to me, just that the whole conversation is just going on, but yeah. Uh, uh, can I say one thing? Cause, cause I, I've heard this now like a few times where we associate um, submission to uh, Judeo, the, the Judeo Christian faith. Um, submission um predates christianity and you can go into places in in africa where people are not muslim uh people are not christian and they still have they still have it where where um wives are sub submissive and, and 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 they engage in submission and i can tell you I, as a, i'm a first generation american you know uh um you know my, there are certain cultures where even if say for example and i know maybe this is maybe i'm digressing a little bit but i'm just trying to trying to um share an example of how the, the culture is right so i mean it's so i mean i don't want to say it's it's rigid like where even if say for example um maad you are a little younger than you you're younger than hanifa right and if you were cousins you would have to submit, even if you were just two years. That's how, like, it, almost every um, African language has um, a title for your older one, right? So my mother's uh, Madingo, and and they use the term Uncoro, right, which means which means like elder sister or elder brother. Um, uh, the the Timonese have a term uh, called um, or Koto, and and the Mendes have a term called um, Go. Like, so you would say Go Maad or, or Go Hanifa if that's your elder. And they're very rigid. They they flex that authority. I mean, this is this is Africa, and and not everybody is Christian, not everybody is is Muslim. So this thing where we keep saying that um, submission is like some Judeo Christian thing, 
um, I, I, I would disagree with that. I think that this, that, that it predates Christianity and that it exists in other cultures that are not uh, Christian or Muslim. I would agree. Hold up, hold up. Can, can I respond? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'll just say to that, um, whether you're an African person in the Caribbean or the United States or the continent, we're all affected by Eurasian um, imposition, right? I think that's always important. And I think in the continent especially, it's very apparent when you go to places like Mali, when you go to places like Ghana, there's a clear clash between indigenous systems and the Islamic systems and the Christian systems. Sometimes Christian if you go to certain areas, sometimes Muslim if you go to others, sometimes a combination of both. So you can't really isolate, no one's really isolated from that. So I think that's very important, especially when you look at the languages people are forced to navigate in like how often, for example, in Mali, the official language they have to navigate in is French, is French, right? And their currency is, you know, the CFA, right? Because of France. So the major institutions they have to navigate are Eurocentric ones, right? So that's why I said it earlier about a clash between things that we naturally do or organically do as African people and then the impositions coming from the, the non-African people, primarily Arabs and Europeans. So it's it's very messy. It's more nuanced than I probably said it, but there's definitely clashes, I think. And I think submission, I don't think those are examples of necessarily submission that you're seeing. I think what it is, is that one thing that I'm very critical of is the idea that, you know, African cultures are egalitarian or equality oriented. Egalitarianism is another Eurocentric thing I think we're very fixated on because of liberalism and individualism and choicism. That's definitely not something you see in African society. I can't speak for you know other cultures outside of that, so I don't want to presume because I can't. But I, I definitely think we have to be aware of, of that that cultural um, clashing but I, um, that I happens I, that that happens on the continent, and I'm very very sensitive to that. As, as well. But also we have to be careful that we're not looking at indigenous things. Sometimes when we're looking at them, we're still looking at them from a Christian or Islamic perspective or some other European perspective, like, you know, a feminist perspective or some other secular um, European perspective. So I, I would I would caveat that. You have something to say, um, Sister Alma? Did you have something to say? I understand what he's trying to, what he's saying, but um, Oh, huh? it's open. Okay. Um, I don't even know how to how to even really like. I don't know how to put it. Just come back to me. I'll, okay. I'll so we're gonna uh we're gonna move forward with the the, the video. I was going to stop at one part, but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go to this part. Let me see here. Go to the 28 minute part. Mark. words uh, have a tendency to have a negative connotation for us because of how they were used against the relationship i don't husband doesn't have to come in and tell you hey uh, yell and scream hey go fix my plate um i think that was a perfect example of why there's such um there's such resistance against the word i'm mika i'm, I'm coming to you and so do you think you know what? Let me let me play this 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 video. Uh, let me play a video real quick, and um, and um, and we'll we'll go and talk about it. Give me one second. Okay. Many people accuse you of wanting to see the black woman at a point of submission. Is that where you want to see a black woman in the 1990s? Well, it depends please. on how you define submission. Those words uh, have a tendency to have a negative connotation for us because of how they were used against us during slavery. Well, and we can make them true, too. But actually, the kind of submission that I'm referring to just means cooperation and agreement. Uh, I don't think that anybody could say that I represent a woman who was subjugated in any kind of way. I don't think that anybody could say that my personality sounds like some man has me somewhere crawling around on the ground or walking 10 paces behind him. So I'm not representing that. I'm representing strength. I'm saying that we have a lot of power. 
We have power to make heaven and hell for our man. And I'm saying, let's try making heaven. Let's try to build him up. If a man has his woman behind him, he will believe he can do anything. And all we need to do is to get our men to believe that they can do anything. Okay, so um, one moment. So, so I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, hold, hold on one minute. I see some some comments um, that I do want to touch on, but just give me give me uh, uh, some moments here, y'all, while we um, finish the conversation. Then I'm gonna try to get to the comments. Uh, so go ahead, uh, Sister. Um, okay, so. Okay, I think in the previous discussion of this, somebody used the, an example of the military. And yes. they said, well, I'm submitting to my, um, my sergeant because I'm, a, I'm, I'm ranked lower than him. And I, I understand what he's saying. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand how he's using the word submission. But I think we tend to take words and take them out of context, and we don't use the proper words. I do, I, I, I think we kind of get things kind of mixed up a little. When you're in the military, there's a hierarchy. It's not about submission. It's this rank, this rank, this rank, this rank. There's there. It's it's it, it's it's not the same. You see what I'm saying? Like it's. It, <laughs> It's just like it's just like with African with African different African um, uh, cultures on the continent. They have different roles. People have roles, but that's not submission. People play their role. This role, this role, this role. You, we do X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, I mean, if you want to, I guess if you want to use the word submission, I, I can't stop you from using it. But the way that submission is being used in social media is not the same way that like we're having the discussion about it right now yeah so it's, it's, um so yeah. that's um, the reason we're having these conversations because people are that that's why they're they they're saying oh i want my woman to be this way and black women aren't submissive enough and all of this it, it, it's not being used properly <laughs> Does you have something to say? Oh, is it me? Yeah, Hanifa. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, oh boy. Um. Oh, I feel like I lost my train of thought just now. But uh, I don't know what you're about to ask about Shara's ass. So I'm gonna let you. <laughs> I'm gonna let you ask well, that. It, it it's going. It's um kind of kind of piggybacking off of what uh sister um Amma just said because. One thing that she said, the first thing, one of the first things that she said was, depends on how you describe submission. So one of the things that I remember, I remember now. Okay. I remember now. Okay. <laughs> so as I'm listening to, <laughs> as I'm listening to the sisters speak, um, my mind goes back to. I tell people this all the time. So my ex-husband was Ugandan, right? And in their language. Uh, what the hell was he? Lord. It's not coming to me right now. Batoro. He's a Batoro. So in their language, sometimes we would talk because my only language is English. No broken, but English nonetheless. And he would say something and I was like, oh, and I was give an English word for it. Mm -hmm. And then he will say, no, no, that doesn't do it justice. Right. And I think that was that is what listening to her, that happens a lot when it comes to the English language. And I am not going to speak for the entire continent of Africa. I am. That is not my uh, area of spe uh, expertise. I'm not going to attempt to do that. But I do know if they're honest. And I know my ex-husband used to be very straightforward with that, is that the English language has a way of he used to say diluting. Mm -hmm. what the point that you're trying to make in is stuff gets lost in the translation oftentimes. Right. And so as I'm sitting here, like listening to everyone speak, I'm just like, you know, the submission piece to yield to, to, to authority. I, I personally feel like even in like this particular conversation, 
I think that in order for a lot of us to understand how multiple things can be true at the same time, right? To where, yes, women can be, um, can show up, um, like Sister Amma say, in a certain role without it being, oh, that's because she's being submissive to her husband. Or the husband show up in a certain role. And these things just kind of work together. So to even go back to Amma's point, I like, I'll break it down just even, like people talk about we all have feminine, masculine energy in us, right? And when they talk about submission, a lot of times people refer to that, right? And for me, I personally say, like, my, if we talking about energies, my masculine logical side or, you know, whatever, uh, submit, like it's, it's a constant tag teaming that happens throughout the day within myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm out and about and I have to, I don't know, lift something heavy and, you know, I don't have a choice. I have to do it. I'm not going to sit there and be all soft and uh, I'm going to do what I got to do to go get it, whatever I need to get done, done, right? I have to tap into a certain side of myself to do that. Now, when I get home, I might not still need that side. I might have to tap into a different side of me. I'm talking about energies here mm -hmm. to deal with my children. Now, if that happens and I'm on the road and I got to lift something heavy, even though I can lift it, I might say I'm going to yield to that, to my husband in, can you get that for me? Now, is it, does that have to do with I'm, I'm just naturally submitting to him because I'm a woman? No, it just means I don't want to lift that heavy thing. <laughs> you got more muscles than me. I'm just saying some of, this thing, some of these things are not as deep as we're trying to make them. And I do believe that just like how I feel like we go in and out of those energies 24-7, I think it even goes back to what Abe was talking about, like the man and the relationship with the children versus the man's relationship, especially in the younger years, right? I agree with that. And that's why I say, yes, the men come in and they say, I yield to your, um, it's not, I hit, I don't know if it's authority. We want to call it that. I don't know. I'm going to say, I yield to your expertise or your strength in this area. You have intel that I do not have. I've been, I'm talking about the men. I may have been gone all day. So you're around the children. Now that's not the reality, especially in this day and age of every woman. Most black women are not around their children all day, every day. When he leaves to go to work, she is right behind of him going to work as well, right? So you might as well go ahead and yield to the intel of the daycare because now they are more intel than both of y'all. I'm just saying, it's like, you, you, you just kind of have to like, if you're in a relationship, I just, for me personally, I'm like, what works best for this relationship? I think we're frustrating ourselves when we start trying to blanket everything and say, this is how it should be. And this is how women should show up. And this is how men should, show up. because what I know from experience, a woman that loves a man is going to respect and honor him regardless. A man that loves a woman is going to respect and honor him regardless. It's a mutual respect. It's not about you hold authority over me or I hold authority. It's a mutual respect. It's an honoring that happens on a daily basis. It's a man that comes home and says, my wife is tired, so I'm going to grab the dishes and I'm going to do dinner. Not a man that says, well, you know, it's your role. You are not you are a natural born woman. This is how you're supposed to show up. You get what I'm saying? And when we have these kind of conversations, it's just very, very... um just very black and white and, and there is no room for gray. And I think in relationships and relating to each other, there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of nuance. There's every relationship is not the same. You know what I'm saying? So I have an issue with when people just come in and say, well, this is how it's supposed to be. To be and this is how, as a woman, you should be like this. I, I just, that's where I get offensive, mm -hmm. <laughs> offended. Not submission. Submission is a word like any other. I don't care about submission to that extent to where it's a triggering word to me. What bothers me is when you begin to impose your beliefs, your, tra your idea of traditionalism and stuff on other people, right? Because you say this is the right way and the only way. Doesn't that sound like, sound familiar? 
This is the one way, the right way, the only way. That sounds very familiar. And that is what's triggering to me, not submission at all. I could care less. If tomorrow a woman said, this is how I want to show up, enough respect to you. You want to show up in that role and be that person and let your husband lead in that capacity? There's no, I, re, I, refer, I refrain judgment for that. You get what I'm saying? But what I need you to also do is hold space and grace for the people who choose to who choose to show up different in their relationship and that showing up different also works for them there are multiple ways to do this relationship thing because we are multifaceted people and very complex you're not gonna all get the same woman you're not gonna get all get the same man so i think when we talk about that i think those are things that we have to kind of remember like we're human beings we're complex there's so much aspects to us so many, so many compartments at play and to just narrow us down to one thing and say, this is how, I think it just, does us, it does us a disservice. So that, that's my thing. I, I'm going to let you guys speak on Sharazad because I have my own story about Sharazad <laughs> because I have two of Sharazad books signed and I have enough respect to the woman, but it doesn't, um, I don't, I don't forget that Sharazad Ali also subscribes to a very Abrahamic religious right. way of thinking. Yeah. I that does not that I I, I right. don't you know like she said some things about domestic uh uh what's the word my art um, <laughs> domestic abuse it's not abuse you know discipline domestic right. discipline okay where a man man should be able to pop a woman so right. there's some problematic right. things that she okay. said discipline okay right and there's some problematic things that i feel yeah. she said and then there are things that she's hitting on the head right so i don't i don't ignore that just because i'm like oh well, this is a black woman so anyway i'll let y'all talk about Sharazad. but that's yeah. all i wanted to say yes. things I'm get let, uh, translation sorry yeah i, I i'm gonna let um brother talawa jump in here um i want to get to some other points um as well uh i but i don't want to keep people for too long i do want to get to some other points Brother Talawa, I know you wanted to, you had something else to be, um, say off of what uh, Sister Hanifa just said. Yes, I think um, one thing about what Sister Hanifa said, um, we have to realize these concepts like the Judeo Christian thing, there were societies, whole societies organized around those concepts. So, in a Western dominant society, you're having an environment where women are, are working alongside men and how that affects, you know, Black women in particular. Um, black men and women were always working, quote unquote, either being enslaved or in colonial conditions in the continent and the Caribbean, right? So when white women go to work, who's babysitting the children, right? You see, you see how that works. So that kind of affects relationship dynamics. So there's economic and social conditions to be considered, but that, that's a little bit of a different conversation. But I think important to highlight. The second thing. I think a lot of what we're talking about, those interpersonal things like, OK, with the dishes example, we're really talking about deference and being cooperative. We don't really need submission for that, because even in the video clip, um, um, Ms. Ali, not Ms. Ali said, you know, cooperation, um, working together, then just use those words. <laughs> like, it's just simple. So we, we have words that are adequate to describe it. So just use them. And the third thing. I can see how the Abrahamic stuff affects the way um, in the videos that I've listened to her talk, I can see the effects of it, you know, being in the nation and stuff. I can see those effects very, uh, they're very apparent. But my thing is not really to bash religion, but I think we should be able to acknowledge that when we're looking at these issues, we're looking at them from a particular perspective. Like, for example, I always say, you know, I'm looking at this from an Afrocentric perspective. Yes, I know not all Black people have an Afrocentric perspective, but I think stating my perspective gives people context so they're clear about why I say what I say. You can agree or disagree, but at least you know where I'm coming from and, okay, I know where you're coming from. I think that's um, important. <laughs> Brother Talawa, can I ask you a quick question? So, uh, I mean, is it fair to say that you believe that the concept of submission uh, was non-existent prior uh, prior to the Abrahamic religions? Could you could you state your question again? Okay, so I mean, do you believe that the concept 
of submission uh, was non-existent prior to the Abrahamic religion. Uh, do you think that the Abraham religion, Abrahamic religions, um, uh, created this this idea or concept of submission? I think the Abrahamic religions, being that they are male-centered, or some may say patriarchal in their orientation, um, creates creates a power dynamic in the relationship where it is God over man, man over woman, and woman over child. And from what we understand about African culture in its own context, in our own context, we think in terms of complementarity. And that's a word that I prefer to use is how a man and woman complement each other. And of course, how that strengthens us as a people, because you can't isolate relationships from you know, the condition of us as a, as a people as well. That's also something that's always missing in relationship convos that drives me like nuts. Not saying you do that, but it just, as I'm answering, I, I think about that as well. And I, I've nagged about that system uh, that we don't discuss values enough. Right. So yeah, but to answer your question, I would say the submission conversation is, is an Abrahamic conversation fundamentally. And if that's something you agree with, I'm not attacking you for it, but I'm saying I, that's just something I don't agree with. So that that's kind of what I, I want to restate. So too, I'm going to uh, move on just for, you know, because of time, but um, I did want to touch on one, uh, something kind of like what Hanifa was saying, but also uh, in this clip here, when she says, depends on how you, you know, describe submission. And so I think a lot of the times when we're talking about, even when we talk about cultural, we talk about cultural differences, right? And then there's cultural differences within, um, within where, where we, wherever we live, you know? So if we're living in the United States, there are also those differences. Just like I said, you have differences between how the people in the North live and the people in the South live, you know? And then um, one of the things that we have to even understand within that is that the same applies because we and we have these conversations, like Hanifa uh, said, we're having them uh, within the context of women. Black women are not submissive, right? And so I think one of the things that we have to outline, and that goes it go goes back to um, what Brother Talawa talked about with having the same values. So you have to outline within your relationship what those things look like. So what, for example, disrespect and respect. What does re disrespect look like in your relationship and what does respect look like in your relationship? Because one thing learn learning in uh, our marriage is disrespect for me may look differently than disrespect from to my husband, right? So... I may think that there is something that he may, I may say, like, I don't think that's disrespectful. He may say, I think it is disrespectful. So what do I have to do with that information? I have to learn that he views us as disrespect. So I have to, I, I, I have to look at that. And so then the same thing, he may say, I don't think that's disrespectful, but I, I do. And so then he has to look at that. So then when we choose to continue to we either can make a decision, right? We can make a decision. Um, and to me, again, this points back to having harmony within your relationship. So you make a decision. Am I going to continue to do this? Because this person, I find, I don't find it disrespectful, but he does. No, I value my relationship. So I'm going to say, you know what? I don't, I'm not going to continue to do that particular thing if he does find it disrespectful. We can talk about it. There are numerous conversations that we've had about something where I'm like, uh, why do you like, why do you, why do you feel like that? Or he may say the same thing. Like, why do you feel like that? That's a part of the communication. A lot of times we're getting on, you know, on social media and we're wanting everyone to agree with our point of view, right? With what we believe is submission or disrespect or respect or what should be in the dynamics of a relationship when it only matters within that dynamics of that relationship. That's the same can go for friendships, right? Because if we're both from, I'll use me and Hanifa as an example, we're both from different cultures, you know? So she may talk to me in a way, right? Where I'm like, that's harsh, right? And 
I may say, I may have to tell her, right, that I view that in a certain way. And that's just in the dynamics of any relationship. So you have to outline those things within your relationship, within in order to evolve your relationship. So I think that we have to continue to understand um, what it means in that particular relationship instead of getting on social media and saying, hey, let's all you know, agree to the terms, right? It only matters within the dynamics of that relationship. So I'm going to continue um, here because I'm, there's some stuff I, I, I want to get to um, before you run out of time. Uh, all right, one moment, y'all, let's see. Uh, Ali? Like, it would be a whole different world for us. Like, it, it literally would be a whole different world for us. And I say this, like, I have to say to women, right? You ain't got no problem bending over and submitting for the act of sex. He could tell you crawl. He could tell you how you going to take it. He could flip you. He could dip you. He could do whatever he want when it comes to sex. But anywhere outside the bedroom, we got to have so much input, though. Like, we got to have so much input, though. Like, I, I just don't understand it because one thing I was taught from a child, right? Somebody got to be the chief and somebody got to be the Indian. Meaning, not everybody can be the freaking boss. And once Black women can understand that there can only be one CEO of the family, then this word submit don't mean nothing. Like black women submit all day, every day to bosses that you got to yield in traffic. You got to literally, you are, you are literally submitting a thousand times in a day to any random anything. But when it comes to somebody telling you to submit to a black man, then it's like, I don't understand this word. And then it's all over analyzing it. And it is all like literally yielding to a higher authority. Do I want my man to be a higher authority? Yes. Because if I didn't want to be with a man, then I would be with a woman. And if I'm deciding to be with a man, then I'm deciding to yield to his authority, because that is the function biologically of anything. So I, I, I couldn't wait till she said that. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. So the thing is, there was a lot, there's a lot happening here in this particular speech. Um, so I, one thing before I get to the last statement, because there's a last statement that she said that is not true. Um, but before I get to that, I want to get to how we continue to um, equate our relationships. And I know most people will disagree with this um, because I've had conversation, numerous conversations about this. But a lot of us equate our relationships to a business, to a corporation to somebody being a CEO, you know, even uh, like uh, Sister Alma, she brought up, <laughs> she brought up um, the military aspect, right? So the the view, if you are, I, I, I just have to, I think like when you understand this, because a lot of times like kids, if kids would hear this, right? I believe kids would hear this in a way that you're saying, okay, marriage is, is comparable to the military, to the army. Like marriage is, com is comparable to somebody being the boss of you, right? So a lot of this, this language that we're using, we're, we're using it in terms of, again, I'm not equating. And I, I, and I said this on uh, your show, Abe. I don't equate submission, which is not a part of my vocabulary, but I don't equate submission with domination. Everyone else who has this conversation does. Like 
It's about dominating. And to be clear, because we're talking about black black women submitting to black men. Now there are, and I had, you know, I I I brought that up before with feminism, right? Because there is there are women who seek to dominate the black man, right? It, and we have to understand the swinging the swinging of the pendulum, right? We have to understand that a lot of these things are happening because of the imbalance. Like, so when there is imbalance, then, you know, it swings far to the other end, to the other end of imbalance until we, till we correct it. So what's happening is you do see that you do see black women who are trying to dominate black men. But when we're talking about uh, submission, I'm not equating with, with dominance. Everyone else is equating it with dominance. So what do we hear in the, what she's speaking of? She's speaking of um, a high, again, that hierarchical position where the man is the, the head of the, of the woman. And so there, there's the clash when we have these conversations, right? Because um, just because the man has strength, right? So when we have these conversations, what are things that are being said? The man has strength. The man has more logic. Uh why well, I'm trying to think of the other things that are said, but those are what we structure, right? More structure. He brings the order, all of those things, right? So that means that the woman has to fall un in line, right? Fall under under the man, right? So I want, uh, you know, someone can just jump in here if you have something to say about what she just said, um, but going back to even the beginning of she said how women are submissive in bed submissive at work right so um that's, go ahead go ahead jump in who are you talking to who, who? i thought um was it brother Tawala or brother Amo? Oh, well, oh. It, was, it was me it was me <laughs> I just wasn't sure you're talking to either. Okay, yeah. okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, because I I think my camera has a bit. Of, our camera has a bit of a, a lag. So a, big lag. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a lag. So, but um, but no. But what I wanted to say is just I want to emphasize what she said about like the business part. Mm -hmm. Again, I think this is why for for us, you know, we look at our relationship in terms of complementarity. One of the things that you see with Eurasian culture is that they see things in terms of antagonism. So people who are, you know, communists or Marxists, they think of things in class antagonism. People who are, you know, feminists, they think of things in gender antagonism. Um, the same way, you know, Christians do, but they just invert it the other way. That's why I call it like the Amazon complex. So for me, and one example I want to give, just a tangible example of this. When you look at the creation story, right, the Judeo cre creation story, Judeo Christian creation story, right, you have Adam and then a woman comes out of his rib, right, Eve. Am I like too off? When you look at African creation stories, they emphasize compliments because they understand that there's no creativity without the complementary dynamic of man and woman. So if you look at, let's say, the creation stories of Kemet, there's like several variations and perspectives on creation. There's not like one single one. But what is a constant is that the main creator, I shouldn't say the main creator, but the supreme being manifests in, in masculine and feminine pairs. That's a fundamentally, already from the jump, you can see there's a fundamentally different perspective on how men and women are understood. So they see how do we complement each other. Whereas in a European context, it's who is dominating over who, in which situation sometimes or overall. But the question is always framed, is always an antagonistic one or always one of dominance and suppression as opposed to complementarity. So that that's kind of what I want to get into. So sometimes it's not even what we're doing, but how we're thinking about something. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that. If, if I can say, uh, um, Talawa just mentioned something and I was listening to, um, there's a, um, a South African podcast that I follow on popular opinions and they usually bring different elders on 
<clears throat> to speak about certain things. And as Tala will talk about creation story, <laughs> one of the things in listening to that and, and the elders were, were speaking about, that's like Credo Mutwa. And, you know, they were, you know, like just they were referencing Credo Mutwa. Let me be clear on that because he's passed. But um, how many uh, of, of Africans don't even know their own creation story? So when you mention that, I'm just like, if you ask, they're going to tell you the creation story is the one with Adam and the rib because they have actually, they've, that's their creation story to them because they've adapted that. But a lot of people don't even realize that they have their own indigenous creation stories. And there is the female principle involved in that, right? In a very big way. And so it was very interesting just to listen. Again, this is South Africa because other parts of Africa might have a different creation story, right? But the fact that um, the elders, you know, these are Sangomas and so forth, was just saying that we have, we've always had our own creation stories. But a lot of the, a lot of our people don't, they've adapted Christianity and they've taken on that creation story, which kind of almost in a sense eliminates the female principle. Because when you get into the Trinity, and this is a recent thing of them now trying to inject the fact that, oh, the Holy Spirit is the female, the feminine principle in it, or this is a more recent thing. But for the longest while, it was just one big uh, male orgy, if you ask me. But man, the, the woman, it was not man, woman, child, if you get what I'm saying. It was man, 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 is what I'm trying to say. And then the idea of woman coming from man's rib. And when he just said that, I'm like, that's at the root of a lot of this. Mm -hmm. That's that's really the foundation of it. Because once you come up with a creation story like that, it's like men are the head, men were first. Men, you come from me. Without me, you won't exist. And I'm like, but nature says otherwise because I pushed you out. So what are we really talking about here, right? Like I can't do it without you and you can't do it without me because I can't give birth without your seed. Right. And you can't recreate yourself without my womb. So what are we what are we really discussing? So both of us play a very major role in the creation process. And to Mika, I was I'm just listening to this part. And Mika is very passionate in what she's saying. And my response, honestly, you, you know, my other I've been very now very indifferent these days. Mm -hmm. But I'm listening to the system like, girl, go ahead with what you believe and go be great. <laughs> But that's not enough for women like this. And when I say woman, let me be clear, because this is not an attack on Mika. Clearly, she has a very um, Christian uh, belief system, right? Mm -hmm. That's not enough for them. I'm thinking if that's what you believe, sis, go with that passion and go be great in your relationship. But it doesn't end there, right? It becomes a thing of if you don't right. subscribe to it, then something is fundamentally wrong with you. And that's where it, it provokes another conversation for me. But I, I think nothing of what like Mika is saying. I, I feel she's passionate about it. And I feel that she should take that passion. And I think she should go ahead and actualize the things that she believes and go be great and, and be great in marriage and, you know, find someone with the same value system, like Talawa said, you know, and, and two of them go be great because they, they believe strongly in it. He believes he's the leader. She believes he's the leader. And I think they'll have a successful relationship. That's kind of how that works. If you find people with the same value system. Right. Y'all good. That's right. it. Right. Uh, I, I think part of the issue is that you have, um, I would say you have a lot of guys that are frustrated with the, uh, the double standards when it comes to um, being traditional. You have a lot of women who expect a man to be traditional when they themselves don't want to be traditional. I think this is this is the uh, the crux of, of this. This is the root of the issue. So what I mean by that is that you, you still have women who expect men to take on traditional roles as as protector. We we've all seen seen videos throughout YouTube where women uh, scream, protect black women, protect black women. Men are responsible for pr protecting black women. That is. Uh, uh, um, that is uh, uh, embracing a traditional gender role for, for, for males. Um, a lot of women embrace traditional gender roles for males when it comes to to earning uh, more because, you know, like we've, we've talked about this a lot about hypergamy a lot, uh, you know, on the show where a lot of women are hypergamous. They expect a man to 
to make either as much as they make or more because the, the mindset for a lot of women is look if you can't um if you can't do for me what i can do for myself then why do i need you i mean it sounds cold sounds callous but that's that's the mindset of, of a lot of people out there so whether it's you know men are uh expected to approach women to show that they're interested men are expected to to take uh, to pay for for dates when 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 they go out men are expected to propose to get down on one knee and propose men are expected to pay at least what is three times their monthly salary for a diamond ring yeah uh, you know for the for the engagement ring men are still no matter you know whether whether a minute um accept this role or not uh the expectation is that men will be traditional and to hear a lot of women you know screaming about men not being providers and men not being uh protectors while they themselves refuse to 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 adhere to traditional roles is the reason why you have so much pushback and i think this is where the whole submission thing came from and i, I think that uh, a lot of people have conflated you know being cooperative because there some some women just won't be cooperative. They want to do what they want to do. Um, and not everybody's going to accept that. Just like, you know, um, Hanifa was saying, hey, look, if that's how you believe, you know, you go be be great. I think the problem is that um, we are not finding people with the, the with mindsets that are um, that are aligned with our own point of view. I think that's that's where this this whole thing uh, um that's where all these issues come about. But I, I, I and I, I'll say this and I'll wrap it up shortly. But I, I do think that a lot of this, these arguments about submission were were born from uh, pointing out the hypocrisy and double standards of a lot of, of sisters that are out there. Wait, Abe, Absolutely. I have a question for Abe. Abe, I, I agree with a lot of what you just said, but my, uh, okay, so, uh, since I'm a, I, I mean, I'm a, let me, I'll just ask him real quickly. Um, I feel like, there's a I maybe okay. Do you think that what Mika is saying that the majority of black women believe that way that they believe that men are the head? Because I found that most black women do believe that now, maybe in theory, right? And that you know, they're not it's not practical in their life, but but my thing is that why are we if 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 most black women believe that way and a lot of black men, because majority of black people are Christian, let's be clear. So, well, claim to be Christian, right? So if most black men believe that way, that men are the head and so forth, and then most black women also, but where are we missing? Where are, not we, where are they missing each other then in that situation? Because what, like I said, you like, like I said, Mika finds someone with the same value system. She should be good. Right. So if these men and these women are coming together and they believe in this, they believe the men are the head, they believe in all of this stuff. What is, what is it that is missing to where they can't come together with this same value system and, and make it work? So it, it has to be more than just submission. So what else do you think is going on if majority of our women believe like Mika and majority of our men agree with Mika? Um. There's, there's there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot there. I, I I think part of the part of the problem is that we here in America we exist in a society where there is a, it's almost like a freaky Freaky Friday. I don't know if, if anybody remembers the Disney movie Freaky Friday where uh, the mother and daughter said I want to be just like you and then they switch bodies or something like that. And we have a Freaky Friday situation where where um you have men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men um you have women that um it's okay for women to to be masculine right to you know the same things that we say is okay for women to do if a man teaches that to his son is considered toxic masculinity if we teach our sons to be aggressive right to to be uh self self um you know to be self con uh, confident to engage in competition because you know competition there's a lot that you learn from competition like all of these things are considered toxic max masculinity when a man is teaching that to a son but when you teach it to um to women it's it's uh to, uh, to a young girl it's it's okay and i don't know i, I just think that 
for some reason, there seems to be um, an assault on masculinity. And I don't, I don't want to take this conversation in, in another di- direction, but, um, but I think that is, is, is more the case. And now, uh, going back, because I got to push back, I keep hearing, you keep, um, um, you keep saying that, that, that this, um, that submission comes from Christian, Judeo Christian. I don't know where the people got that from. Uh, it existed, it existed, excuse me, it existed prior to Christianity. And even if you go in the ancient Mediterranean cultures, you can see how, um, these things existed prior to Christianity. And I know you'll say that it's a Western thing, but I'm just saying that because I keep hearing that it's, it's, it's a, Christian doctrine, which it isn't. I mean, there are cultures that that had uh, submission, whether you want to call it patriarchy, that existed in their cultures that predate um, um, Christ- Christianity by thousands of years. Right? The traditional roles are meant for our survival. Uh, women have, you know, women get pregnant, have a gest- gestation period uh, from anywhere from thirty six to forty weeks. Women are very vulnerable. Men have a responsibility to protect. Women. That's that's how we ensure the survival of our species as as human beings. Uh, matter of fact, most mammals do that. You see, male mammals will protect um, uh, a, a pregnant, uh, you know, whatever pregnant species they are, they are a pregnant mammal or uh, a mother and the 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 offspring. That's just what we do for survival. You know, so this thing, I think, because of feminism, because of technology. Um, it, it, it's almost like a sense like, OK, well, we don't we don't really we don't really need you. I can do it by myself. But the reality is in a post um, if, if technology fails, uh, if technology fails, we would go back to a situation similar to, to how it was in the 1700s and the 1600s where we need each other. But men have a responsibility to provide and protect for a woman. And maybe because I see myself as a traditional person myself I, I i believe that men have a responsibility to keep their family together no matter what i believe that men have a responsibility to lead and provide guidance and leadership for their for their children um uh and steer them in a correct way i think that that um women have a responsibility to be nurtured because women are the nurturers i mean that's it, there's a reason why men don't breastfeed i mean women are the nurturers women are caretakers there are things that women um can do that that you know they can just do much better than men but that's that's my own belief i'm i'm sure i'm pretty sure people would disagree with it but i i think that's where the issue lies where you have women who really want men to be traditional they still want men to be traditional while wanting to be modern themselves and I think that's where this whole problem lies. I think uh, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, you, you have to pick what side of the fence you want to stand on. Do you want to be uh, modern? Uh, and if you want to be modern, then you can't complain about guys who, 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 who want to go 50-50 with everything. I don't agree with 50-50. I, I believe as, as a man, you, you pay uh, uh, if, if, there's a, if there's a situation where... Uh, you need your wife's help in the beginning. Fine. But you get to a point where you take the lead. You're responsible. You're responsible for providing for your family. That's just what I believe. Some people don't believe that. And I don't think that that's a Christian or Muslim thing. I think that's something that's been with us going back 5,000, 6,000 years where women were out there hunting, you know, picking berries and men were out there uh hunting animals and if, if you know the women were pregnant everybody uh the, the tribe or clan the men had a responsibility to protect the women i don't think that has anything to do with christianity so i guess my question is uh, the what we're, we're basing this off of um i know you because you, I, I think i heard you say 1700s so 1700s where um i i, I think my issue is like when we and i guess that's the conversation because we're talking about traditional versus modern so who are these traditional people and who are these modern people (laughs) like where do they exist what is traditional what is modern and then when you talk about i mean there's so many questions i have with this like submission what is submission based on your historical context is it just protection is that is that it is just protection and the women are out there picking the berries like i what is the the 
where because I mean we're talking about when we start talking about these things, we do start saying that like all of this existed everywhere in the world at one time. You know, just like we know that probably in each of our households, right? We probably all operate differently. There might be some things that we do similar, you know, there's some similar things that we do, but we know that we most likely operate differently. We live in different parts of the world, have lived in different parts of the, you know, of the world. Um, so we all operate differently. So when we start talking about years and tradition and what's modern, what is that? What is that? What is what is that, Abe? Like, what is what does that mean? Wait, quite, wait, my aunt, real quick. Um, I just want to make this clear. I agree with with Abe on the pre date of Christianity thing. Mm -hmm. But when we bring up Christianity, we're bringing it up because it is the point of reference for people that believe in something. If when people talk about submission in these, they are not talking about patriarchy prior to Christianity. We know that's not what's happening. In fact, they go all up in Ephesians and all up in those letters that Paul wrote to those churches. So let's be clear. Let's be honest when we have these conversations. That is not what people are pointing to. They are pointing to scriptures. They are pointing to what we call the Bible. They are pointing to the Christian's sacred texts when they are talking about man, like uh, Talawa mentioned, God, man, woman, child. Their point of reference is that in fact most people don't even know what you're saying that what we consider patriarchy today predates christianity most people does not talk about that in fact sheikh antadiyap writes about it so i do agree with you but that's not the point of reference and we know this to be a fact that's why we are we are addressing the abrahamic religions because that is people's points of reference they're not going thousands and thousands and thousands of years back to try to figure out how did patriarchy become to be the dominant thing? That's not what people are doing. I just happen to know because I read, I study, but that's not people's point of reference. People's points of reference is the Abrahamic religions. And that's why we're speaking to those particular um, religions, because that's what people are pointing to. They don't have to be Christian. Most of us grew up in Christian household. We come from Christian families. That's the order of the day. So that's what people reference when they're talking about men being leaders and the last thing i'm going to say is somebody talked about talents and strengths and stuff like that people are not saying men are leaders because men have muscles or that men are more logical let's be clear because the bible does not go into details as to why men are the head people are saying men are the head simply because of their genitalia people are saying men are the head because simply because they are called be they are born men it has nothing to do whether they can actually lead or not no one is saying that men are the leaders if they can lead they are telling women simply because you're a woman you need to submit to a man because he is a man this is the conversation we're having but then we start throwing in other things and we start to move the goalposts all over the place east west north and south and then the conversation becomes a little bit dishonest but i just wanted to say that we're not referencing prior to Christianity. We're referencing the Abrahamic religions because that is most people's point of reference. Mika talks about it. Most women who are Christians talk about it. Most men reference that. If you ask any man that believes in that, where does that come from? If they will not tell you, they're not point at a point in history before Christianity. Uh, I, I, you know, I get that, I understand that, but my position is that just because you're a man uh, does not entitle you to the submission of a woman. And uh, again, you know, that's this thing where you have guys who feel like um, like they they want women to be traditional because, you know, submission is is part of what they consider traditional, but they're not wanting to be traditional men themselves. You you you. you you can't want a traditional woman and you want to go 50 50 right and and there's certain things i just my thing and that's why why i you know my focus now i want to i want to start to focus more on, on on talking to men about about some of these things because if you want a woman who is supportive because because let's let's be honest like we've hanifa you've been on the show uh, we, we talked about this we talked about hypergamy we talked about how you know some women feel that men are in um intimidated by a woman's uh education and 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 her uh and her 
her career, you know, her career success, which I believe is false uh, because I, I don't think most men care about uh, a, a woman's uh, academic, academic accomplishments. Not, you know, uh, in that way, I mean, uh, like most men value a woman's beauty um, and fertility because men are, are, are physical. Right. That's something that we care more about than than a piece of paper, you know, from a from a college or university. But but. Um, I hear I hear what you, you, you're you saying. All I'm saying is I can I can only I can only um, give you my opinion and, and my, my position and where I come from. And all I'm saying is if you, you ask me the question, I'm going, I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, 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 you know, I'm going to give you my answer. I, I don't um, I, I feel like a lot of it. A lot of men out there are pushing back on the double standard. But I think this talk about submission i agree with with uh uh uh, i I think it has become hackneyed i feel like um it's it's misplaced for some people for some people but the thing is i think we end up making it a bigger deal because it's not that big of a deal we all submit in our relationships at one one at one point or another at one time we've all submitted my i'm sure that your husband has 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 uh, yielded to you uh, to your expertise in a certain area that is a form of submission. Uh, I'm sure that you've yielded to his strength. Uh, that is a form of submission. We do it all the time. So that's why I don't understand why this we make this thing such a big thing. Uh, and if we didn't make it a big thing, it would be a conversation that would last five minutes and and not stretch as long as it has on. On social media because I mean we've been talking about submission now for years on on social social media so go into what you said and, and brother tell I'm gonna let you uh, I think you had your hand up so I, I do want to let you jump in but it going back to your conversation Abe right so when I brought up in the conversation <laughs> that I wanted like let's let's talk about the characteristics because because let's be real when we talk about men picky choosing they're not choosing the woman who is a better nurturer they're not choosing the woman who is more submissive they're choosing that woman based on their looks they're choosing that woman based on if she looks like an instagram model so a lot of times what you're what you say that you desire and not you a personally but what a lot of these men say that they want or what they desire is not who they actually try to couple with. And then they, after they have coupled with this woman based on her looks, based on her appeal, based on her her sexual appeal, based on how well she performs in the bedroom, then you have an issue with the fact that now you have a woman that you deem is not actually being submissive when you didn't care about how submissive she was, because going back to what Mika said, you only cared about her submission in the bedroom, not you, A, personally. You, um, they only cared about her submission in the bedroom, but now you want her to be submissive in other areas. Now you want her to be a good nurturer to your children, but now you have an issue because you put, what, what, what is the saying? You put the cart before, you put the horse before the cart, Right. Like this is the conversations that we're talking about because we don't have to talk about submission. And I said this on I said this on your show, eh? We do not have to talk about submission ever again, but we can talk about the characteristics, right? We can talk about what actually is needed in the relationship. I would prefer to actually talk about that. I would actually prefer to talk about how do we evolve our black relationships and black marriages. But how long, and this is no dig to you, Abe, Abe, you know, I love coming on your show, but how long did we spend on y'all wanting me to submit to the word submit? How long did we stay on that particular topic just because I said I do not use the word? So, you know. (laughs) No, no, no. No, we did. We, we, We spent um, I don't know. It must have been at least forty minutes. Uh, we spent a lot of time on it. Yeah, and and you know, and for me, like I'm always shocked by how people are so. Uh, you know, they find it so objectionable, and so it, it sparked the conversation, and everybody went. So I just said, okay, you know, uh, we'll go with it. But I'm always surprised. It, it, it doesn't seem like uh, it should be something that that people would find objection in, but, but they do. And so that's why we have these conversations. 
So I said I wasn't going to get to the comments, but hey, listen, I understand you think I would not let it go, but I was not the one who would not let it go. You literally had the you had them on the panel telling me to submit to the word submit. I was willing to let it go. OK, so I, 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 I think that it's the whole idea of use the word submit when I'm just saying that I just don't use that word. In understanding, I am not confused about the word because I gave you the the definition of the word. I do know what the word means, but I do not use the the word does not come up. You know, it's it's just like what Hanifa said in her first statement. It's just not something I discuss. You know, like I have discussed this more times on social media than I, in my fifteen years of marriage. You know, there are other issues we may have had in our our marriage. But I have never had my mus my husband say to me, "Woman, you need to be more submissive." Like that's just that's just not a point of conversation. So I, I it's it's I'm not confused about the word. <laughs> I'm confused about why we keep talking about the word. That's what I'm confused about. So, brother Talawa, I want you to jump in because I know you had your hand up. Okay, just just a quick thing where I do agree with um, brother Ak. Is it Abe or Ak? Oh, you're on, you're on mute, brother. I didn't because I didn't want to say you're no, right. no. I mean, it, you can call me Abe. I mean, AK is just my initials. I mean, that's my my tag right, on YouTube. All right, mm -hmm. all, right, all right. So, Abe, um, the attack on black men because I I think this is important. Um, what he says there, I think what we're seeing is you know prior to I think early on our socialization, our primary reference point is you know, under these conditions of white terror domination, our reference point, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, has been primarily a Judeo-Christian reference point. What we're seeing now is we're seeing a generation, let's say the lower end of the millennials and subsequent generations, I guess it's Gen Z, and then I think there's a Gen Alpha or whatever. You're seeing them socialized, not into the conservative Eurocentric paradigm that we've been socialized under, but they're socialized towards a liberal, what I call a Greco-Roman, Mesopotamian kind of model where it's very much about subverting the previous order. The terms are the same, but they're simply going on the opposite end of the spectrum. So you're seeing conservative socialization versus liberal socialization that you're getting through the daycares, the schools, the universities. And so what I think a lot of men who are dating are pushing back against is you know men who have a more conservative value system are trying to be with women who have a liberal value system and you know, the two things aren't mixing so when you talk about for example and then also the women who are liberal who want men to do this and that economically they don't care about the conditions of the race of the men they're trying to pursue they're out for themselves right this is about individualism in its grandest form like the oh i pay for dating stuff none of this factors in our racial conditions or black empowerment i never hear these people talking about how their relationship works for black empowerment it's always i want x or i want y so the the depoliticization of relationships is a big problem because if if your priority was to have black children you wouldn't have swirlers you wouldn't have passport bros or other forms of what i call bedroom colonialism, because I don't like the term interracial relationships, because that's just not accurate. It's 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 black rinsing um, sex that you're engaged in because you're de-blackening yourself lineage wise. So I think those conditions are important. And specifically what he said about with technology and the more we industrialize technology being that next stage of industrialization, as more people are economic units for themselves, like, OK, a woman gets a university degree, like love says get university degrees they get jobs, they're usually higher paid than the men who are unemployed, right? Who are largely unemployed or can't get certain positions because of you know the university issues, right? They're gonna want those conservative traditional values, but they have actual liberal ones. So you see that so you're seeing a clash that's directly tied to those economic and social conditions in this um, plantation environment. But in terms of going to the other part of what you were saying, um, Sister Maud, about things we should think about, I think a solution, again, this is from an Afrocentric perspective, we should be thinking about what is complementarity? How do we complement each other? How does a man complement 
an African woman? How does an African man compliment an African woman? And how does their relationship magnify or how does it mirror what we need to be doing in terms of a nation building, black power nation building perspective? That's kind of how we have to connect that personal and political. Those have to kind of be aligned. But a lot of times with most of these social media conversations, they're not usually like that. <laughs> it's usually, I just want X. I just want a man that's going to pay for every damn thing while I make more than he does. It's, it's because you're, you're seeing really the problem of Eurocentrism, in my opinion. But I'll just wrap it up at that. Well, I mean, yeah. And again, it has to do with what you just said, nation, nation building, right? So nation... When we talk about nation building, it's going to be different Different because most conversations that we're having with people, they're not trying to disconnect from, from this paradigm, from this society, from this way of thinking. So it is, it's going to be, it's going to be different. It's, it's, you know, we're not going to be having the same, we're not necessarily having the same conversation, right? Because at the end of the day, I can sit here all day and I can continue to tell you why I don't use the word submission. Then. Submission is not the only word I don't use, right? <laughs> My, there are other words in the English language that I don't use because of the frequency of the word. But again, that is um, that that's one thing that we have to understand when we have these conversations on social media. It's 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 a continuous kind of back and forth of everyone trying to get you either to change your mind or. To, to, to see their point of view, you want them to, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I really don't even, even under, understand, understand it sometimes how we're like battling, like, you gotta think, you gotta say what I want you to say. Like, you know, you're, you're doing it now in the comments, like, you gotta be, you, you gotta say that you're submissive because that's what you're doing. That's you're being a submissive wife. Right. And, you, and, and so I find it, it's kind of just funny to me because you can use the word and I said it. I, I have said it. I said it on Abe's. Use the word. I do not care if you use the word. Go ahead. Use the word. Think that, you know, that um, because you're, you're the, the man based on whatever you think, whatever you believe and go. And if it's working for you, if it's working for your relationship, if it's working for your marriage, do what is working for you and your relationship and your marriage and whatever is going on in your life, go do it. Be free. Like Panifa said, be free. Go do it. Like, I don't understand why we have to continue to battle. But if we're talking about building within our community, which I do believe that Abe's um, channel is a place where he is trying to create, uh, you know, balanced conversations. So I do believe that if you are about trying to create some type of unity, right, which what are, what's what is community based off of is based off of families, it's based off of um, the structure of families, right? So if we're, ba if we're basing it off of just that, if we all agree on that, like, we just want to see more black relationships, more black marriages, more Black children being products of balanced homes and Black relationship, Black marriage or Black couples, if we are agreeing on that, then we can say that there are some things that we can agree on and then what is needed for that, right? The, the word submission or any other word that you want to use, yield, stop, sit down, shut up, whatever you want to use, those words are not needed. What is needed is actually what it takes in order to build within that. And we can start at choosing wisely. Who are we choosing to couple with? Is it based just on how that person looks? Or are you having deep conversations with this person, knowing what kind of mind is going to be raising your children, right? What is going to be raising the next generation? Because that's something that we can all build off of. You can, you can use whatever words you want to use. Any, it's, so, my, uh, so if I could say something real quick to that, like you, I'm glad you, you, you hit you on fire right now with what you're saying because it boils down to that. Like when Abe was talking, when Abe said, you know, I'm, I'm I want to start focusing on these guys. I know I was on mute, but I was over here like hallelujah and amen because that is what a lot of women in the space have been trying to say to these men. 
You guys are spending us so much time on why black women don't do this, why black women. Don't. So what happens is it begins to feel like if I'm engaging with my son like that, why you do this? Why it starts to affect him after a while, right? That he now becomes, I'm the blame for everything. Mm -hmm. Now that goes from you blaming me. Now I feel attacked. And I think that's kind of what's been happening. And not just YouTube, just in the social media spaces in general. And that's why my thing is like, get outside in real life. You know, most people right. who are married, no, seriously, most people who are married for a long period of time, whether they've chosen the submission, like um, based on Abrahamic religions route and their marriage is 30, 40 years. I just was at a, um, a, a, a vow of renewal yesterday. <clears throat> the pastors that were there, <clears throat> they were married, what, 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they subscribe to that. And that's working for them because they have the same value system, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it does go back to that. These men are online lying. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're lying. I was watching uh, Mario uh, 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 Brothers, whatever, with my sons, right? Mm -hmm. These dudes have a Bowser syndrome. Mm -hmm. Here's Bowser, mm -hmm. a turtle. Skipped over a million and one she turtles. To go after this princess with blonde hair who found him right. hideous. <laughs> right. He know he was hideous. She told him he was hideous. He figured if I can acquire all the power in the world, then this princess is going to love me. Uh -huh. And still found Bowser to be hideous. Now the rest of the world and the rest of the kingdoms got to suffer now. Right? Because Bowser decided to overreach. That is what we're seeing with a lot of guys. They're saying, I want this, but what they're pursuing is something different. And for me, we need the Abes. We need the Talawas, right? We need the men in these spaces who are willing to talk to these men because you're asking a woman, you're having a submission conversation and you're saying black women have an issue submitting and black woman response to you is to what? Mm. Because not only are we in a dire situation, our men is in a dire situation. And what you're asking us to do is you're asking us to just submit based on the fact that they are males. That's it. And a lot of women are saying, but I'm the one that's making money in my home. I'm leading. Let's be clear. I'm leading the home. I'm making the decisions because you guys are saying you should submit to men. That so that the conversation is all over the place because what we don't realize is that we're all in the same position here as black men and black women. So what is, what is the real conversation that needs to be had? So I'm glad that you pointed that out, that you guys, are, and, and it goes back to Talawa, values. Like he said, I've started focusing on values. What is her values, mm -hmm. right? Is her value is to constantly post on social media to show her fat ass? And you still pursuing that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You still attracted to that? So then now I'm questioning your mindset. And I think that's why a lot of women like myself, like Ama, like Ma'at, we're looking and we're saying, dude, but this is who you guys are choosing. We're confused. Because we're like, I know good sisters who they're single. And you guys are saying that we you're telling us we don't exist. You're telling us that we don't exist and we know women like us. So when we look and we see the woman that you're pursuing, I can go through her social media and I know the same social media you, you saw. And I'm like, and you still choose that? You still choose to pour your energy into pursuing that? And now because it blows up in your face, you out here like Bowser, you want to burn the whole woman kingdom down at this point. Because this woman who red flags everywhere, forget red, neon, the colors of the rainbow, the flag, she had them. <laughs> choose to ignore them because she looked good on your arm her complexion was the right complexion her breast sat just right you couldn't resist it her butt just was just boom bam bam and all you could think about is i want to plant my seed in that fertility right that's all you could think about and now the rest of us gotta deal with you on social media whining and you're not whining about woman you're whining about that woman <laughs> Bowser. You're, yeah. you're whining about <laughs> that woman Let's be clear. So I'm glad when he said that, I'm like, yes, we need more men like you guys to talk to the men. That's what we need. Because when we're sitting down and, and all we're hearing is woman this and we don't do this and this is why and da, 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 it starts to feel a little bit like an attack after a while. And it's like, what are we really doing? Because you're taking the responsibility off of our men. And it goes back to it's a complimentary relationship. 
right? Is the energy is just kind of flowing, like Tala was saying. So you can't just focus on fixing one while the other one, the stat, this is just there lollygagging and talking about submission. And only one is working on themselves. We need everybody, all hands on deck, for us to start doing the work on ourselves. And our conversations need to reflect that. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, peaches, 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 peaches. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mario references. <laughs> so, um, I don't have any. I, I mean, I agree with everything that was uh, um, that was said there. But um, mm, I was gonna say something, but I'm gonna show this last clip. Um, this is because this is all we have time for. Um, so I'm just gonna show this really quickly. And then uh, we'll kind of kind of talk about it and then wrap up from there. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let see. Topic, but it, it still ties into submission. So what what I asked um, Maat was if if a woman is not willing to submit to a man's protection, how can he protect her? I want you to start there uh, uh, before I go on to the next question. If a woman is not willing to submit to a man's protection, how can he how can he protect her? He can't. There's no way that he can because she she won't follow behind. You have to be behind me in order to be, to be protected. And again, men men like protecting who's vulnerable. We like to feel like the person that we're protecting is vulnerable, like children. You may have a problem with protecting children because we know they're small, they're vulnerable. As long as we see women as vulnerable, then we have no problem with protecting them. But once we see them as <clears throat> not vulnerable and, uh, you know, whatever, then it makes it hard to want to do it. We naturally want to do it as long as they are vulnerable. But <clears throat> when you stand on this, I'm not submissive thing, it kind of it's a form of of not being vulnerable to me. And <clears throat> it makes you less attractive in a protective standpoint and just attractive in a sexual standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mika, <clears throat> I, I want to ask you, let me, um, um, let me ask you. So <clears throat> what, what are your thoughts on that real quick before I ask you another question, man? If, 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 a, if a woman won't submit to a man's protection, how can he protect her? I mean, common sense says, <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because women can always understand their relationship when it comes to their children, right? They mm -hmm. can completely understand their children <laughs> submit to them. But when it comes to them having to submit to a man, it's like, oh my God, I can't, yeah. I can't understand this. If you are crossing the street with your child, and your child can't be told, stick close to me, hold my hand. Where's your child going to go when your child don't trust you to lead or your child is too obstinate to even listen to what the hell comes out your mouth? Your child going to be what they call roadkill, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. women are consistently putting themselves in a position to be roadkill because of this feeling like you have to have this power dynamic. Like, it, give it up. You know what I'm saying? Do you fight with him to pay a bill? You know what I'm saying? You be like, no, no, let me get, no, you can't pay that, I'm gonna pay that. <laughs> when you start fighting that man to pay bills, that's when you start fighting for submission. Like uh, uh, of this topic of submission, right? And so this is just very simple, right? And we don't even have to get biblical on it, right? I, I will consistently keep saying this. Somebody got to be the boss, right? And let's be honest. Women don't keep men that act like women. They demean them. They debase them. They leave them. They cheat on them. So if you want a man to be a man 
and you want to keep a man that's actually a man, you're going to have to submit at some point, right? You're going to have to submit majority of the time. And, and I have to say this because it, it, and it kills me when it comes to, like, women feel like just because they are in a relationship currently mm -hmm. that they are the end all be all. But we understand you can be in a relationship and it be total bullshit. It's just like me. I could be married today. I was married 10 years. It could have been 20. I got married when I was 21. I'm now 43. We could literally be 22 years in right now, right? So being and sustaining a relationship just really don't mean nothing when it comes to how we need to teach these people to be for them to be a success, right? Mm -hmm. We know how men thrive and how men are most successful. Do you think Bill Gates was arguing with Melissa? <laughs> she was like, no, I can't submit to you and your billions. You okay, we're gonna stop there, right? Um, because here we, here we go again, um, with the, the, you know, the, the, the value piece. And I like Mika's convictions. I just want to say that. Right. And, you know, in the kind of, in the kind of digs, right? Like, because just because you marry don't mean you know what you're talking about. <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, but anyway, um, so the 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 thing that I wanted to to even say from the from the beginning of that right um even when starting with um when Ray said the whole idea of a woman being vul being vulnerable if she's not vulnerable and maybe he used the wrong word you know is that a is that a a need um in either um a word brother Talawa, you can kind of jump in here like is that a, a need a woman needs to be vulnerable in order yes. for you to be attractive to her oh, oh I, I wanted to say oh i, I was gonna say yes but there, there's a caveat to this i okay. said yes because this is how we know these convictions these these type of things are euro christian oriented this is exactly why it's based on god over man man over woman woman over child it works within that dynamic. And I'm going to keep repeating it because it comes up every time, even if I don't think about it. So that's how that perspective manifests. So that's one manifestation of that perspective. Now, I don't have that perspective. So for me, no, because the point is that you want to be, from an Afrocentric perspective, you want to be with someone who compliments you, mm. right? So my thing in terms of with men, because I, I do agree with what Hanifa says about men and women, like we look in the wrong places for people or sometimes our values are off. And I think part of that is tied to our cultural confusion under the plantation. Because when I look at other groups, like I won't focus on, you know, necessarily um, the, the white people, but like if you take, like take a different group, like let's say um, the South Asian people, like people in like India or Pakistan, what I find with them, when they go to look at a partner, like they can do, everyone does the superficial stuff. We all do that. But they can say things like, I want someone who's traditional or modern within their cultural context. So they mean traditional, like whatever their respective culture is. And then modern means they have some kind of leaning to what the West says or whatever. But there's some kind of reference point that they have that clarifies what they should look at in a person. And it's always, you know, very culturally oriented around them as a people, what they have to do. But with us, it's very, I find the conversations are always very abstract. Like, I want a man who treats me good. I want a woman who does X. These things are very little, very often almost completely divorced from politics or value systems. Like, I think I was saying some in the chat to Hanifa about, like, guys who say, like, they're 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 pro black, but then some of the type of women they pursue, mm -hmm. and, and then I've seen the women do this, but I'm just talking from a male perspective. You kind of raise your eyebrow and you're like, okay, 
<laughs> okay, but I think that that's just a product of our socialization. We divorce politics from relationships. We actually, for us, it's like the last thing. It's if it's even a thought. So I think the depoliticization of black relationships is a problem because my thing is, if you're saying, well, these other groups of women are going to do X, Y, Z, my thing is none of those women can give you a black child if you're really serious about black empowerment. None of these non-black men are going to give you a black child if you're not serious about black empowerment. Now we can disagree. The ideology comes into you know the terms of how we think of empowerment looks like and what we think we have to do. That's where ideology matters. But if your value already is, you know, to date out or you need a certain amount of materialistic, he needs to make more than me or I can't do 50-50 and you're not thinking about the conditions of your people, well, you know, <laughs> you're your own problem as far as I'm concerned. So my thing is you got to look at what your values are and make sure you're actually consistent with those values that you say and pursue people who have them. But don't try to, you know you know, turn water into wine or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, even for me, from my personal experience, I had to reflect, even this before I met, met Amma, I realized I was looking in the wrong places for women. Because I think what it was as a child, I was, I developed my political views very young, like racial pol politics, like around 10, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So when you're dating like that, everything, it, it, it gives you a certain way that you, you know, you look at people, but when you start, but most of us start getting our political views, usually like in our twenties. So, so the dating sort of changes. So there's a lot of those contradictions, those mistakes. So I think that's what it just comes down to us not being clear on our values leads to those contradictory dating habits. And sometimes it takes those experiences to really see it. Yeah. Like you have to kind of go through those mistakes to kind of see it too. So you can't, it's not just going to kind of fall in your lap, so to speak. Right, right. And so um, one thing in, because I'm going to get your perspective on that, A, because one thing that I think, um, and because it was even said on the show that we're, that women are children, right? Um, and so when I hear the vulnerable, vulnerable piece, right? Like you want women to be vulnerable, Right. Um, it in even going down the line where um, during the conversation, um, I mean, it was flat out said, I, I believe by Mika, um, that women are children. So is for for you, you know, going back to what Ray said about that vulnerability, does it make when women are not vulnerable, does that make a woman less attractive? No, I to me, I, I don't I don't think it makes you um, a woman less attractive um, to be fair to him. You know, I'm not trying to clean up what he said, but I think it's more so about um, women needing men. Right. Because men have a, a have a need to feel um, needed and women have um, a need to feel desired and appreciated by their husband. I mean, this is just these are just natural expectations that we have for one another and um if, if if a man doesn't feel like you need him then he's like okay well what am i what am i here for no a man doesn't want to feel expendable in a relationship and so i think that's what he was getting at i mean when you say we need women to be vulnerable it comes across as though you're saying hey i need i need women to be weak and that's the only way i'm going to help them but really what i what I think he was getting at was that I need a woman, you know, I want to be with a woman who, who needs me. Right. Um, I was going to give an example, uh, one of his examples where he talked about um, if you have a woman who is engaging in masculine energy and is initiating the fight, it's much harder for a man to jump in on her behalf than it is for a woman who is, you know who is resting in in her femininity she she is is vulnerable i i don't want to say like he comes across as like uh like wearing a cape but um i don't know maybe maybe my example is is not not the greatest but but men men most men need to feel needed right and they want to go um where they're needed as opposed to go where they're they're tolerated if that makes any sense well yeah and i mean i think um so, hmm, 
Okay, so there's there's a few things because we, yeah, you can clean it up, but we know like Ray has said like women don't have a right to to do like they shouldn't have a right to vote. You know, like you know he's he's he says some things, right? So I do believe. You know, and I'm not going to you know, like, you know, I'm not going to bash him because he's not here, you know, so I'm not going to really bash him today. But I do know that, you know, when it come, comes down to it, I do know men that do want weak women, women. Um, and it's it's kind of like I, I, I've i seen the dynamic uh, and I've seen this, you know, and uh, this is one of those things where there's a man who has gotten a woman and she's like in her low place in life or whatever right and so then when she she starts you know feeling more confident about herself um doing better maybe she is working things like that then that man no longer wants that woman because she no longer in in his mindset needs her now i've seen it vice versa as well with with uh women and, and men as well that can happen because i don't like i said i don't think that it's one thing or another right i don't think it's i don't think it's only men do this or only women do this i think in our society right now because we are not this is not natural to who we are i think we seek to dominate one another you know i think that most a lot of um men seek to dominate the women and a lot of women seek to dominate their men and what that looks like is going to be different based on the relationship. But that's a lot of what's going on. Now, we have to kind of, and just basing it off of some of the things that I have seen as far as like somebody calling someone a feminist, right? I've dealt with this being on YouTube. Because I don't agree with, your, with, with, with what you're saying, you want to paint it black and white and say, this person is a feminist based because I don't believe, I don't agree with what you're saying, right? So from a woman who's been married for 15 years and I am married to, in my opinion, a very manly, manly man, right? So in my opinion, he is a man of all men, right? Athlete, all those different kind of things, right? So the thing is, but I still, we still look at one another as complimenting one another. That is not a feminist concept. I think you need to really start looking at what feminism actually is and um, then go and talk about the different the different types of feminism before you label something as, oh, that's a feminist talking point. We need to stop doing this very black and white thinking and actually have the conversation go into the nuances. Now that would take hours, right? So we're not gonna be here for hours tonight, but really, um, labeling things without actually having the deep level and the nuanced conversation. And so when I think about um, even when we're talking about, uh, and I I think it was, um, who said it? Um, oh, when it goes back into um, when you, when she said that women um, are like children, right? So I think that a lot of what is what's, what's happening is we are learning unhealthy dynamics in our from our parents, right? And um, we can go. That's a whole different conversation. But what happens is we learn those unhealthy dynamics within our just parenting. So, for example, when you hear men say that women need to learn to sit down and and, and shut up or whatever, and that's a thing or. I don't want a woman back talking me, asking me all these questions and all this different kind of thing. That's the thing with them parenting. A lot of uh, people don't want their children asking them questions. They don't want that quote unquote back talk from their children. So then they take this. This is a very, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a, opinion, a very weird dynamic. I'm taking what I learned as a child from my parents, right? And now I'm applying it to my relationship, to my marriage where either I seek to still be in this, um, I guess I will use the word that Ray used, vulnerable position. I seek to still be in this um, where I'm being taken care of position, or I seek to be in this dominant position where I am telling you what to do. 
Now, I'm not saying that you exist within that paradigm, Abe, right? But I'm saying with a lot of these conversations, um, we can, you know, uh, Hanifa, we can go back to re remember when that guy came on the show when we were doing that show um, on conversations with queens when he came up on there and was just like, you know, women need to sit down and show a you know, panel full of women. And you're saying that. Why? Because that's what the conversations are about. They do not want the, uh, uh, um, a woman who is going to, to necessarily, I'm going to use just use my language, challenge, right, or challenge you, which that is a part of the comp being complementary to one another. You want a woman to most, and I think most men, um, balanced men, want a woman that can think, right, that can navigate. And I think we both want someone who kind of we need, we need, we don't want to be a a woman who are like our man, our man don't, don't need us. And I think the same thing happens with men as well. So I think when we talk about needing one another, we keep saying men need, I mean, women need men, but men also need women or we, or there's no evolution there, right? Like there's no evolving of our community of who we are if we are not if, if we're not if, if we're, we don't need each other right so i think that's one of the things that uh who just took was that you brother Tom I just wanted to say say one okay, okay. one quick thing. I, I I think the reason the reason why we focus on on letting women know that they need men is because women are the ones who are pretty you know uh, you know they're pretty vociferous when it comes comes to saying that they don't need a man. You don't you don't hear a lot of men saying that they don't need women. That that's an argument that that a lot of women make. No, that is not true, Abe. Because I know. I knew, you know in these men of spaces, not to cut you off, Abe, but you know these men say we built this world. No men, no woman would exist without 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 men. Like we, that's that is actually a lot of what's going on now. That's now, new we, though. That's that's new. I mean, men men weren't talking like that thirty years ago. But okay. but okay. women were women were saying that they didn't need a man thirty years ago. See, so what you what you hear with the whole red pill stuff, this is all a new phenomenon that has been around maybe seven, close to 10 years. Nobody talked like that in the 80s or the 70s. So, so what are we what are we saying here? Are we trying to go back in time? Are we, we no, 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 no. I was just addressing why why men are saying that that women do need uh, men. I, I, I typically believe that we need each other. Right. I mean, there, there are um, there are a number of studies that show that men live longer when they're married, right? And and some guys, they don't want to hear that, but it's the truth because women are more nurturing. A woman is going to get you, as a man, to get you to get off your ass and go to the clinic because if it, if it were up to us, we would not go see a doctor, you know? A woman has that intuition where she knows, mm, you know, something is not right. You need to get up and, and go, and she will drag you. I'm telling you, this happened to me because for, for us guys, we were like, nah, we'll, we'll be all right, man. Give me some tussing and, and I'll be all right. I, you know, you don't want to go go to the doctor, but- you know, like I said, women are n nurturing. They have that intuition and they can tell when something isn't right and they're going to push and push and nag their man. And as a consequence, women are keeping their husbands alive. That's the reason why men who are married um, uh, live longer, because you're with somebody who is is, is nurturing you with somebody who ha has like a certain intuition and instinct. Right. And she she loves you enough that she's going to pressure you to go to go seek uh, and get some medical medical attention. OK, yeah. And I, also, go ahead. A, wo a woman living longer because a, a married woman living longer or is it just married men? Well, the studies that I, I read were um, were married. Uh, married uh, men. I didn't see about um, married um, women. I do know that because um, uh, I try to I try to look for say I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some studies out there that may say that that women live a shorter amount of time. I'm pretty sure, but I haven't seen the studies. I, I've only seen the studies that suggest that that men live longer when they're um, when they're married. I, I do believe that women are better off when they're married. Say for example. Let's just take, for example, a woman being a baby's mother versus being um, being married. Right. Um, 
even if the guy is is the most useless and he doesn't make a lot of money, mm -hmm. when you're married, if he has a job and he has insurance, guess who gets it? The wife. <laughs> well, you know, um, the, the, the social security, there's, there's certain, so to me, marriage is about, it, it protects you, right? It, it, it gives you a certain amount of protection because if you're just a baby mother, let's say, because some people are out there buying homes and property together, which is crazy when you're not uh, when you're you're not married because in the event that you die and uh, uh, the sibling can come in or the person's mother can come in and say you know I want to fight for for my kids half or my my brother's half of that property then you have to go to probate and you by the time you spend so much money in probate man you're gonna have to liquid liquidate the property or the assets and you're not gonna you, you're not gonna benefit much from it so. Um, you think is the beneficiary of my life insurance i don't know who you designated as a beneficiary no, my point is you just said you you specifically said if if the man dies the woman collects the insurance no no what i'm what i'm saying is okay so i i the, the you have the insurance but um when you're talking about the social security you have to be married you cannot be um you cannot just be like a girlfriend right no uh, i got that but doesn't yeah. that go both ways because the reason why i'm responding to it is because you, you specifically I, I said that the woman gets it from the man and i'm like but that right. goes both ways R right married. but but it's it's women women who have a lot of uh hardship when they're older a lot of a lot of women have financial hardship when they're older. Now, I mean, we we could debate this back and forth, but no, no, no. It, I'm not yeah, it. No. I just feel like a lot of what you're saying goes for because what you what you're reminding me of is that we live in a different time, right? Mm. We keep you know um, a lot of the talking points are connected to a time where women did not have as much freedom freedom or um, access uh, to certain things as they do right now, and so. I think a lot of men are afraid to admit, and I know I'm probably gonna get some a clutch for this. I I I think a lot of men are uh, uh, finding it difficult to admit that a lot of women were not happy in the position that they had been in all those years before, and that's why the, as soon as an opportunity was presented to them, they took it. I think that's a part of the conversation that some men are just not ready to have. I'm not. I'm. I'm open to having it, but not in an extreme way because there are women that would jump to, oh, everybody was being abused. You know, men were beating women. I'm not. I'm not interested in that conversation. I'm interested in the nuance that says, yes, there were some women who was just like, yeah, I'm going to choose this over you because I've just been unhappy with you in whatever capacity. Maybe I feel I felt subjugated. Maybe I felt abused. Because honestly speaking, like if there's something presented to me. And I know I have a good man at home. I'm not sure that I'm going to opt out of have my good man just for that simply because it's presented. I think that there was a lot more things going on that we don't talk about that it's not written in the books that our grandparents don't talk about um, that we're not willing to dive into because we have a certain narrative that we want to push, which is black women are, are, the, are the downfall or the reason why the black community is in shambles right now. I think that's the narrative that a lot of people are trying to push. So we're not open to having a real, honest, complex conversation because there's so many factors at play that we're not willing to touch on. So it's easier, my art, just to, to respond to what you said, to just say, oh, that person is a feminist because it takes more work to really try to understand where the person is coming from, why they think the way they think, all of it's just easier to just say, you know, because we very, but we have a very binary way of thinking. It's always either or, which leads to extremes. If it's not this, then you're this, mm -hmm. right? If you don't see it like this, that men are the head, then you are feminist. And it's like, but you don't skip over. You went from one to ten. What happened to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine? They don't get no play, no attention. We don't talk about those. So we tend to think in, in extremes in a very binary way. And I blame our educational system and all of that other mm -hmm. stuff, but that's another conversation for another day. So it's hard for us to even process how multiple things can function and be true at this. It's very difficult for a lot of us. I still struggle with it sometimes in certain capacities. So I just wanted to, I was responding to what Abe was saying because I was like, the times that we live in, there's a lot of men. Yes, Abe, this is a new conversation. You're right. 
for the conversation of asking women what they bring to the table is the same conversation of I don't need a woman. Tell me what you could do for me that I can't do for myself. It's a very recent conversation. I agree. That is that that is I blame feminism for for that type of stuff because you, you know to ask a woman okay well what do you bring into the table see when you say what do you bring into the table uh i don't know to me at least in my mind i i think you know financially what material things are you bringing to to the the, the table right um i i don't know I, I like i said i'm not i'm not big on the 50 50 or the expectation of of women to provide look if we need to i mean because it's happened even in, in my life there was a time we were in we were struggling students we were we were we were working but then when i got to a point where um my salary like my wife's salary wasn't necessary you know we become like a one salary home not to put put my 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 information out there i i just believe that as a man you lead you protect you provide that's just me i'm i'm traditional in that respect and that has nothing to do with uh, you know with christianity it's just it's just what i believe um I think my I'm not sure, but I think you and I share the same opinion when it comes to to homeschooling. We know that you know when when it comes to to little kids, you know it's it's better that they're homeschooled than than they go to that uh, propaganda institution known as public education in, in in America. I mean, public education in America, not to deviate too much, is not really about education. It's about indoctrination. It's about preparing you uh, to work in factories. It's 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 post it's a post-industrial indoctrination camp, right? It prepares you to work for the factories to uh, either be in, 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 you know, or serve in the military or, um, or you serve in, in, in jail. I mean, look at how they set up schools where the bell rings and uh, the whole setup is, is like one you would see uh, on an assembly line or in a, in a factory. And I, I didn't mean to deviate too much, but yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it. I'll, I'll leave it there. I don't want to, I don't want to shift the conversation. Yeah, so um, it, did anyone have anything else to say? Because there, there was, a, well, I, I'm going I'm to say this real quick, and then um, I'll ask the question. But because um, there was something that uh, the wireless woman did say. She said that the man's they exposed these men, it didn't create them. It gave voice to how they felt all along. So I do believe that what we are seeing, I think we, we sometimes do forget that point that it's because of social media and giving voices to people that we're hearing a lot of these things now, right? So um, you can say what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? So when I was in my 20s, um, I did hear girls who were also not far from my age saying that they, you know, I don't need a man, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. So I think that what we're seeing now is the fact that a lot of people are just getting, you know how they talk about all these crimes, right? Uh, things that were happening to black, to, to black people, they were already happening, right? But what, what do we have now? We have social media, we have people with cameras on their phone. So now we can start, see, we start seeing those things um, now more than, than what we were seeing them in the past, right? So that, I think that's the same thing that we're talking about here. These people already existed in whatever form, just like Women existed who said they do need men. Men existed who said they do need women. And then um, these men and women also existed um, as well. Um, go ahead. But what is the source for that? I mean, because somebody's just saying that. Where did they get that from, that these men have always existed? The the, the manosphere is an outgrowth. Is, is, the manosphere was, was uh, a product of social media, but it grew out of the men's right movement. Men's right movement is maybe what, from the 80s? I don't know that there was a need for a men's right movement in the 60s and 70s. These are these are people who have getting uh, pretty much getting raked over the coal when it comes to to uh, child support, which, again, I, I believe that child support enforcement by the federal government is unconstitutional. Um, uh, how it's been one sided, how women women get uh, custody of the children 90 percent of the time, how you have no fault divorce. There are a litany of, of, of things that have caused men to 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 say, hey, man, look, OK, you want gender equality. But what about our equality? There, there are certain things that are, that are just not fair. Uh, a, a man can go to if he if a man doesn't register to vote when he's 18, he can he can go to jail 
uh, for up to five years. He can pay two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars in, in fines. Uh, he won't get any uh, uh, what is it, uh, financial aid. He can't get any um, government job. But women are not held to that that standard. That doesn't apply to women. Now, if you talk about gender equality, it would be fair on both sides. But that isn't the case, right? When you look at reproductive rights, you know, if if a, if a man and a woman both a man and a woman have responsibility to um, to protect themselves against unwanted pregnancy and any diseases, both have a responsibility. But w after conception. It's the man that pays, right? If, if a man wants to have a child, he loves this woman. He feels that she's beautiful. He loves her. But she feels that she's not financially or mentally or emotionally ready to have a child. There's nothing he can do to stop her from terminating that pregnancy. But if the roles are reversed and the man feels he's not financially or emotionally ready to have a child, she has the child. And the same woman who says, hey, the government should not tell me what to do with my body. It's my body, my choice. Now runs to the government and said he i had his baby go make him pay you see that that that's a double standard and and th this is what what a number of men are complaining about so again when you talk about the manosphere manosphere is a byproduct of social media but it's an outgrowth of the men's right movement which has not always been around despite um what whoever said that i don't know where they got that from the manosphere whining about women. <laughs> The man is well whining about, about the fact that, let me just be clear, the woman that they want, don't want to submit to them. That's it. Women the woman that they want, don't want to submit to them. And that's why I went back to that question of, I know a lot of black women who believe in submission. I know a lot. A lot. Because most of most black women subscribe to Christianity. Most black people in America do in general. So that's what I was saying. Maybe on paper they do. <clears throat> Maybe once they get into their marriages, that's not the reality because the church has just as high um, of a divorce rate as like the secular world. You know, that's a thing as well. So for me, it's just like, I think oftentimes it's just, it just boils down. I just put that in the comment section, like, dude, just, yeah, just go find people who align with your values and stop giving the rest of us a headache. <laughs> I agree. Like, no, seriously, take, a, take accountability for your poor decision making. This, this yeah. is the manosphere yeah. is mad at the wrong people. They 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 don't even look at like who's who's creating who's creating the conditions for um for all of these things that go on in the courts with the child support and all this. Who's creating who's creating those? You're mad at women but you're not mad at the, the white society that you live in. Like it don't even make yeah. sense. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> their their anger is misdirected. Yeah. right but it's it's spreading like wildfire mm -hmm. you know like and it's not just on here like i know people who are dating now and these talking points the very same talking point that i just saw uh ray kind of went down in a in a and I, I was responding to him but i i deleted i was gonna say dude can we just have a conversation like human beings and not like we're ais to where we just quoting talking points because right. now women are dating and I had a sister was telling me a dude brought up and I was, and I had to say to her, I said, do you know the manosphere like talking points? Have you ever heard them? She has no clue because this is not what she does. But I recognize it because I've been in this space long enough. And I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Is this what these men are, are coming to in the dating, like the kind of like, you know, court in the dating process now? You know, what do you bring to the table? What? Oh, women do this, or or men do this. Women, men are more; they are more virgins, male virgins, than there are women virgins. I'm just like, man, this this joint wasn't even in our consciousness yeah. a year ago, mm -hmm. and this is how this is how ideas spread, and this is why people be like, this is not this is just the internet. It's not just the internet. No. These people are tuning in, young impressionable minds yes. Yes. in this yes. 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 And they're listening to these women. Let's start this because every time you talk about the men, somebody gets in and says, "Well, men, men, men too, or women too." I'm like, okay, black people. Let's just cover it all bases, okay? You're talking about young twenty-something-year-olds, women coming online and hearing these big grown body women in their forties talking about what a man has and what he doesn't have and most black men do not make six figures in their 20s most of them 
So you have young 20 something year old woman saying, well, if he make it six, sis, you ain't making six figures at 22. Right. I'm glad you said that. But this is what this is bringing on. And that's why I'm like, we have to really take responsibility to how we're having these conversations because these things are spreading on TikTok. Our young people are living off of TikTok uh, shorts. They're getting history lessons from TikTok <laughs> shorts. There is no context. There is no like point of like, okay, where does this conversation start from? None of that. So when we have these conversations, it's not enough to think it's just the internet. It has gone beyond that because you have these young girls who are saying, well, he don't show up like this. Ma'am, sis, you are talking about a 45-year-old man. Your description is that of a 45-year-old black man. You are 22 years old. You will not find a 25-year-old black man that, that fits that description because he's still trying to figure it out just like you are. Most of our men are not hitting their peak financially until like 40, between 40 and 50 years old. Right. But you have 20 something year old girls saying, well, you know, if you don't show up like this. So it's how we're having the conversation. And then we flip it to the men. How these men talk about, well, woman, I could have never. I don't want my son listening to that. I don't. Because, you are, because yep. you, 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 are, you are speaking from a place oftentimes of hurt. You're, you're trying to be the voice of your boys. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're unmarried boys, you're single boys. I'm talking about the ones who are married and having the conversations. And I'm just like, these young boys are hearing this, right? And mm -hmm. they're listening. And how the conversation is being had, it's women are to blame for everything. So now you have a 22-year-old, 20-year-old man who barely mm -hmm. lived his life talking about, well, the black woman didn't do this. Barely know any history. Barely. Don't even know what the what the term... Uh, uh, um, submission mean don't even know what hypergamy mean but using it all out of context and shit right 20 year old and that's when you know you guys are on here extracting talking points and introducing it into your dating process and i have to say those of us in our 40s and stuff who are online having these conversations we are going to have to be accountable for this we are going to have to be accountable for this just like the generation before even if they're refusing to take accountability, has to be accountability uh, accountable for some of the mess that we're experiencing right now. So my thing is, what are we about to do? Are we about to break the cycle of passing on this foolishness to the next generation? Or are we going to wise up and start being more careful about how we're having these conversations and what we're saying and what we're calling each other and how we're describing each other? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I, I will say, well, two things. The, the one thing I want to say, and this is me wearing my, my tinfoil hat now, conspiracy theory. I believe this um, push to get men and women to um, to constantly fight and be, you know, uh, you know, this gender war. I, I don't know. I, it might be far fetched, but I think it's more of like a an agenda for population control, man, to keep people separated, man. They're, while they're doing that. They're trying to redefine what a man is, redefine what a woman is. I mean, everything is this nothing but just total confusion. And me personally, I think there's a, I think there's a hidden agenda. But I, you know, I, I, I could, I could, I could be wrong. But that's just my conspiracy theory hat I'm, I'm wearing. Not only that, they're trying to redefine <clears throat> what blackness is. That's why with all of these social media outlets. Like it's all aimed at the children to get them away from procreating with other black people. That's the mm -hmm. whole point to stop them. Oh, we want we want the bira they like biracial is becoming black now. Before you know it, people like Rachel Dolezal are going to be considered black. And it's all it's all like they're trying to do it slowly. I think they can succeed here in America. Other places maybe not. Other places that are um, predominantly black, but I think they can they can definitely do that here with what they're doing. Oh. Well, it, they can do it because, you know, I don't want to say we're gullible, but, you know, we as black people or African people, um, we are very emotive. We're very emotional. Mm -hmm. And when you're emotional, it's easy to manipulate you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm trying to be careful what I say because this is, it's not my channel. Even even on my channel, I'll, I'll be careful. But it is amazing to see how a certain group of people have tethered um their movement 
to our historic movement and experience. Uh, hopefully you can read between the lines, right? Right. I mean, and when you go, you 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 see the churches. I mean, you see the Black Lives banners, and you see other type of flags that are that are right there next to it. So it, it, they're creating this this perception that that um, the two are inextricably linked. You see what I'm saying? So now it makes us the de facto um, guard dogs for a group of people who don't even really care about us because if you know anything about that group of people uh they have um uh, historically they are more racist than than the general society writ large if you've read any any publication and i'm sorry I, I'm, I'm trying to be vague with how I'm, I'm talking because i don't want i don't want um your flag the, your channel to get flagged or anything my heart right, and this one really loud and clear and, and that's what I mean. I think when we're talking about relationships and, and something Hanifa said about the intergenerational dynamic is very important. I think for those of us who are parents, who are, you know, who are parents, young parents, we have to really dictate our children's socialization, right? And that's part of why I think homeschooling is the way because it's, 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 it's a political question and ideal. There's a number of, of reasons why, but it's definitely has if, even if people aren't necessarily doing it for political reasons, there's a political implication to it because you're saying, I want to control my child's socialization. Or in our case as African people, we want to do in the way that we see it, our child's <laughs> safety of mind, right? From the, you know, the public indoctrination factory, right? I think that's important, that, that political part, because going to the socialization of, and the population control thing, all these things, these swirling messages. Now you're seeing like with the little mermaid. I just know for me, not saying that I agree with those things, but I know my picnic can't watch them thing that I'm not gonna have my yeah. children consuming that, right? I'm not gonna have them consuming those things. Like we, we have to be very deliberate with those kind of choices. Like Miles Morales, I, I, I've been on this for a minute. He's a biracial child. There's no black woman love interest. He's not black, he's biracial. They just do whatever. His mom is a Latina woman who is not black. There's nothing black about him other than how they drew him and his father. There's nothing black other than him other than that. And we have to kind of get out of that need to be represent the representational politics and into whose terms are we being represented on. I think that's that's where we, we are going to get into ideology a bit. Ideological differences come out, but those are critical things to address because going back to what AK said about um, the 80s, 60s and the, the manosphere, it is definitely a response to feminism. It is definitely a reaction to feminist indoctrination. And I think it's a conservative, a black conservative response from males to that um, form of indoctrination. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a kind of right wing indoctrination as black people that we're used to under Christianity. But now this generation is used to the liberal indoctrination. So neither of which, in my view, I would argue are on our terms, but that's really what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. This is why we're seeing women talking about swirling. It's a reaction to the beckification of, of, of Black men. But when you see these NBA players, right, which is why I don't watch those games anymore, right, the women they have around their arms are non-Black women primarily. And no, I don't count if they're mixed and they're athletes. I don't count them because <laughs> the reason for taking that woman is to be distant from anything Black. Right. So I think that type, that socialization to, to make it short, I think we have to really pay attention to that socialization and the gradualism, basically, to make it short, because I know I said a lot. Oh, OK. Yeah. So um, we're going to because uh, I do want to, you know, think about everyone's time. So I thought I was going to be able to. Um, I thought I was going to be able to get to the comments, but I, I'm not. I appreciate everyone who has commented. Um, great conversation. Great conversation. Um, but I want to get everyone kind of final comments on how we evolve this conversation, right? How are we going to evolve past the word submission, right? So again, I... We, we, we talked about, there are many things, right, that we've, we've spoken about. We've spoken about values, right? So you, you find someone who has the same values as you, that's it, you know? If someone agrees with um, 
the use of the word submission, you know, you, you get with that person, but we do have to be a, um, more intentional, right. With who we are coupling with, you know, so a lot of, um, the gripes, just like we said, right. We talked about the gripes that men are having with women is due to the fact that in, in, I really want men, you know, and I, we're on a, a panel of everyone here is married, you know? So a lot of times when we are having these conversations um, with others, it can be difficult to navigate the conversation because you're having the conversation with people who are single, but they're not just single, right? Because there's, there's a way to be single and balanced. And then there's a way to be single and you're still, you know, you're, you're having a conversation with people who are not necessarily thinking in uh, logical terms and balanced terms. So it can be very hard to have those conversations and navigate the conversation, even if you don't agree with agree with the ideology. So even um, though that, you know, we, um, as far as Abe and um, I go, right? We don't always agree with everything, but we do agree with a lot of things a lot of things and we can kind of come to an agreement with um some of what I guess we'll consider big things right so even what Abe was just talking about right I can agree with that you know with those things you know those things that you know we may not be able to say out loud here right on the channel but we can have these conversations behind closed doors, if we are really working on building with one another, building our community and things like that. So I think the main thing that I want to always get to is the solution part, right? Like if we're really talking about um, building Black families, building community, you know, we've had conversations on whether we can actually build with one another if we if we think differently, right? If we have different faith systems and things like that, which I believe yes and no, I, I do think that it's a yes and no thing. Again, when it comes to community, right? I think the same thing, the same rule applies community as it does in relationships. You find people that you can build with that have the same values as you. Like everybody does not necessarily, for example, this is an example. Everybody does not want to grow their own food. But if I want to grow my own food and you want to grow your own food, we can work together and grow our own food and having that type of community. But if you don't agree with it, why am I trying to force you to come over here and grow food with me? Right. So I think the same rules apply with building. Uh, I'm sorry, with our relationships. Stop trying to get me to submit to your idea of what a relationship is. Right. And I'm not going to make you submit to what I believe my idea of a relationship with. And that's the thing that you have in your relationship. You agree with the terms within your own relationship, and then we can move from there. So with that being said, I'll start with you, Abe. How do we evolve past this conversation of submission or even all of the other stuff, 50-50, all this stuff that we talk about in these spaces and actually get to um, navigating where we are creating more healthy relationships in marriages within our community? Um, I would say, you know, the thing is we have to embrace clearly defined roles. And I know that's a, a sticking point, but for, for all of us, you know, folks who, who've gone to college, if you've ever worked in a group, you know, the group works well when you have clearly defined roles, like, you know, hey, you're responsible for this, you're responsible for this. It doesn't mean that the roles at some point are not interchangeable, but you have to have like primary roles. And so uh, when I talk about like, you know, with traditional roles, and look, again, I'll say that that women by nature are more nurturing um, than, than men. And that's not universally the case, but by and large, that is the case. Uh, so women, when it comes to children, are going to be more intuitive. They're going to do better than than males. And there's nothing wrong with a male submitting um, to um, a woman's instincts when it comes to to children. It would be ridiculous to have a man trying to compete with a woman as to who could be a better care, a ter a caretaker for, for the children. I mean, you know, you, you yield to her expertise and and vice versa. I, I just I think that our relationships need to be more collaborative and less competitive and confrontational. I think 
that's I think that's where this whole problem comes from. I think when when a lot of women are hearing um, submissive, what they're hearing is a confrontational a- attitude, like you say, this this uh, desire to dominate. And I, I won't I won't disagree that that isn't the case for some some guys because maybe some guys don't have a lot going on in their life and they just need somebody to feel like they're they're under them uh, because like as Hanifa said, submit to what um, you can't expect a woman to be traditional. If you're if you're you're not traditional yourself, you know, um, she's working and she has to pay all your bills, but you want her to be submissive to you. That's that's not that's not going to work. You know, I know you're not entitled to anybody's su- submission. So um, I think understanding that, you know, a, a, a clear communication, uh, having clearly defined roles um, and having patience with one another. And, uh, you know, I, I, I will just leave it there. Thank you. Um, and same question, uh, um, Brother Talawa or um, sis, uh, Sister Alma. All right. Um, I just think, you know, I, I look at it from an Afrocentric perspective. I think we have to look at the ways that being in this Eurocentric system affects the way that we view relationships and our condition as a people, because those two things are connected. And if we're not serious about that, we're gonna continue having these problems in this area and other areas that affect us. But again, they're, they're not disconnected. But in the context to narrow it to relationships, we should think about how to complement one another. And I guess just for males, I think from a male perspective, when you're choosing a woman, you know, politics before you know what <laughs> to quote to quote Umar Jones because I really do agree with that I really do agree with that you have to pick <laughs> politics before Punani right? really, really, you have to really think like that it's, I, I don't mean to be vulgar and say it but I'm serious about that I, I really live and die by that um, you we really have to start factoring politics into how we choose a partner that, that's a better way to say it. I, I really think that that's important and sister, I'm not worried about you. Do you submit or? Uh... <laughs> so really just understanding that um, Black men and Black women are two sides of the same coin. You know, we, we are, we can't survive in this this thing without one another. You know, if, if, if you know, majority of Black people that live in America have a nine to five job or they work for a company or something like that. Black men, a black man or a black woman is the only, we're the only ones that are going to stand, understand each other. You can go and go off and go get you a little, a little Chinese thing or a little Japanese thing. If you bring your issues home to that, to that woman, she's not going to understand you. She, and the man, the, the and vice versa, they're not going to understand it. And you're going to, you're going to hold that and, and it's going to bottle up inside of you. I mean, I, I've had a few friends who, um, you know, guy friends who they, they marry Asian women and that's their main problem right now. They cannot voice and vocalize to their women about the problems that they face daily, the racial issues that they face. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason why, um, you know, the stress level is so high. I mean, hypertension is the highest in African in African American men and women. We We need to really work on ourselves and work on being with each other it really reduces the stress level it reduces it 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 builds us us up psychologically spiritually that's what's making us live longer you know um and i i just that's what we need to focus on and having black children yeah i agree thank you um sister ama and um brother talawa and uh, Last but not least, uh, my sister Hanifa, tell me, how do we evolve past this? Uh, <laughs> it, it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, we all have to start taking personal accountability, man. Like, this is, this is really what's lacking in a lot of our lives. And we're very dishonest about it. Like, very dishonest about it. 
you know, we're dishonest about how we, how we choose our mates. We're not honest about that, right? We, we want to choose our mates based on aesthetics and outer appearance. And then once we get them and we don't give them, we don't put a baby in them and everything else, or she don't give birth to his baby, whatever that, their baby, then we want to get into the conversations that really, really matter, mm -hmm. right? By then, it's too late, right? And when I say too late, it's causing people to break up because you're talking about the things that matter the most very, like too late. Because now you have children involved. Now you guys are invested in a relationship. So I think it's a conversation around like, how do we change, you know, uh, well, I remember Sir Hale and Manshua. Those are the two people that I've heard say that we have it backward, that the dating process actually takes place after marriage. And we're trying to do it before marriage. And that's where we're running into an issue. I just had this conversation with a friend as well, because now what they believe in, I'm starting to really see what they mean by that, right? Um, so I think it's just, we're very dishonest. We, we would rather have um, very broad conversations about things that we may have experienced here and there versus focusing on where we went wrong, correcting those things, so I think we need to start having conversations about maybe giving people the tools to properly self-develop, whatever that, you know what I'm saying, whatever that looks like. If you're going to do from an african Center perspective, you do that. If not, but if, we have to start giving people tools instead of allowing, instead of creating spaces for people to just um, complain, but not actually try to fix the problem. And fixing the problem, you can talk about women all day all day long and what's wrong and we're going to always find fault in what women do wrong we can always find fault in what men do wrong we can do this all day every day but until you get down to the nitty-gritty of i can identify what's wrong in those women what i need to get at is why i'm still choosing them why am i still having children with them why am I still wifing them? And it's the same thing for women. You could talk about men and men in this all day long until you get down to the real nitty gritty of why am I still choosing those type of men? Why am I having children with those type of men? Why am I saying yes to the proposal from those type of men? Why? Because that's where it begins. That's the only way we can affect change is by changing ourselves first. We can talk all we want about whatever and keep it broad. But I find as human beings and as black people in general, we have an issue with personal accountability. Mm -hmm. We are liars in a lot of ways, in more ways than one. And you cannot make changes until you start being like really honest with yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm attracted to toxic men because there's a part of me that's toxic. I'm attracted to toxic women because there's a part of me that's toxic. Now we can get to something. Well, which part is that? And why is it toxic? Right? Let's get into the shadow work of it and all of that other stuff. Whatever people are calling it these days. But let's get to the root of the issue. But it, we can't get there if we constantly pointing the fingers at other people outside of ourselves. And we're never addressing why our own lives are in shambles. Why we can't connect with people. Why we still continue to sleep around and we're well in our 40s, going in our 50s, right? Why are we still having oops babies when we already had three oops babies, right? Like what is going on with us that we constantly have to keep making the same mistakes and there's no correction that's taking place? That's what we need to get down to. Personal accountability and then connect with other people who is about personal accountability and building in a real way? If you homeschool, connect with homeschool people. If you, like you say, you want to eat from the, the ground or you want to plant, connect with those people. But you have to work on yourself first. And we, we're not doing enough of that. And that's why these conversations, like the group conversation in these spaces are so addictive. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's really deflection. People would rather participate in full planet, uh, panel conversations just talking about things in general than mm. talk about, about them specifically, right? So instead of me saying, well, you know, I had this experience and I messed up this relationship, I would rather engage in a conversation about what men do wrong. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Versus what is it, what have I done? 
to cause me three relationships where I'm the common denominator. What, where is it that I'm doing wrong? But that never, that never comes up. It's about men this and men that. Sis, you and your fifth man, right? You and your fifth man in one year. And you still out here talking about what's wrong with men? Sir, you are on your sixth woman in one year. And you still out here talking about what's wrong with women. You don't see that you're the common denominator. And perhaps you are part of the problem. And that's, that's how we evolve the conversation. People come into the conversation in honesty and ready to take some freaking personal accountability so that we can move the conversation forward. Otherwise, we're just talking. And I'm, I'm to be frank, as, as talky as I could be, I'm over some of the, most of the conversations I don't want to have. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that I'll say just because, again, I said it before, what you may deem, because the thing about it is a lot of times when we are telling people, for example, this can happen in the dynamics of a relationship. If you're telling someone to be accountable for their action, they can deem it as as disrespect. Right. So you can deem something as disrespect, but that person is just asking you to be accountable for, you know, take accountability for what you're doing, what you're saying, whatever. And so I think a lot of times when we're having these these conversations and if someone uses a word, for example, I, I, I'm just looking at the conversation in, in the chat. Right. For example, Rico saying that using the word whining is disrespectful. Well, I don't necessarily think Hanifa used it in a disrespectful way. And so I think we got to be careful with um, deeming, you know, deeming something because Hanifa's not in re a relationship with you, right? Like y'all not, you know, like y'all not going out, you know, going out. No, Hanifa, oh, yeah. my aunt, my aunt, don't even. I, I, I am disrespect. Shout out to Rico. I'm, dis I'm disrespectful right now. No, no, no. And and, and, oh. and, I, and you know what? Since you bring it up, like Rico, Rico, uh, Rico have talked to me on panels with Abe. He's talked to me in my comment section. I am not a disrespectful person. In fact. In fact, if it's any, it, it, more than most black women, I advocate for black men. I have two black boys. And mm -hmm. anyone that know me or my aunt, you know me. My husband is in the chat, mm -hmm. right? So to, to, to take something that I said and you f just say, I felt disrespected, right? right. But to right. just say you're disrespectful is a whole nother situation because there are men on this panel, Talawa, there's men in the chat that didn't, that didn't feel disrespected by what I said. So we can have a conversation and you say what you said made me feel disrespected. Then we can have a conversation. But if you're going to broad brush me, hey, I'm from the Caribbean. My back strong. Like there's certain things that don't even bother me. They just fall off of me like water. And that's one of them because I know that I'm not a disrespectful person. You know, I don't have any any issues with 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 um with Rico. We've never had any issue, and I I don't think. See, this is the thing that I've learned. When you say in it the way that these men want to hear it, you all praise is due to you. Mm. But when you don't, this is where we jump to the, the 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 um projecting and the extreme thing. I am not a disrespect disrespectful person. Anyone that knows me know that I'm very straightforward. That is how I am. But if you feel disrespected, then let's have a conversation about that. But don't put it out there that I am being disrespectful to the entire damn manosphere. But whatever. Maj, you brought it up. I was ignoring uh, it. To be honest. No. And the, re the reason I brought it up, because it goes back to what I was saying, what I said before, is that that happens within the dynamics of um, relationship. Because something that someone else deems as disrespect, someone else may not think it up as disrespect and we got to remember we are on social media we're talking in chats we don't know the tone the context we don't there's a lot of things that are missing within that so I think we have to be careful with the language that we use instead of like like you like she said like using a broad stroke and saying that something is being deemed as disrespect it's just like be like Haniva might say something right and it may come off um, it doesn't really come off to me because, you know, I'm from Louisiana. We say, say stuff. But for some people, it may come off like you might. She may say something in a harsh way. Right. And, and somebody might look at it as like, man, that was harsh. Right. But at the same time, it, she she's not meaning anything by it. Right. Because even saying something, somebody is, you know, whining now that may seem like somebody is being just, you know, like being disrespectful, but it's in the context. So then I, I would ask. Wisdom Bar said it. 
do you find that when wisdom bars not not to put you out on that wisdom bar you know you know you you know my you know my, you know he, I don't mean anything by it, but do you feel disrespected when he said it, right? So I think a lot of times that is what we, we have to understand because we're talking about communication, right? Um, communicating with one another and actually, because I think when we explain things to one another, then, okay, you, you're either going to accept it or you're not going to accept it, but you cannot necessarily tell somebody what their intention is. You can either accept what they're saying, or you don't accept it, and we just move on, right? And so um, I, I don't want to stay there, right? I just wanted to like address that because that happens in the dynamics of a relationship within communication because we, we can go back and forth and say, you were doing this, and the person is saying, that was not my intention. My intention was not that, right? So I think um, that's just, I just wanted to point that out. You know, I just wanted to go go there, but anyway, um uh okay okay Rico all right you got it so um <laughs> so <laughs> with that I think what Hanifa touched on about self-accountability is very important we do have to um be accountable and when we talk about toxicity right when we say toxicity is all around like when you turn the tv on toxicity right so you have to when you um get on social media toxicity. But if you are following the toxicity, that means that in some sense that you are drawn to that toxicity, right? If everyone around you, if you say, I'm always attracting toxic people to me, then there might be some toxic aspects of you that you need to. Um, there's a whole, there's another thing that I call a buzzword. Um, me and Hanifa talked about this and that is shadow work, right? Um, shadow work yeah so a lot of people do shadow work in front of everyone right you see the people they get on they turn the cameras on and they start meditating or you know all of these things are happening in the light but to me shadow work if you're calling it shadow work it happens in the darkness a lot of these things are happening in the dark but we want to come on and we want to attach ourselves to anyone who is thinking like us right we can see just in the comments alone that a lot of the conversations that are happening, as long as you agree with me, I'm I'm with you, right? I'm with you because you agree with my point of view and we're not actually communicating and actually having the nuanced conversation. But that's okay because guess what you can do? You can go align with that person who thinks like you, talks like you, walks like you, believes like you, all of those things you can just align with that person and go and, you know, do what you do with them, you know, and build with them. You don't have to come over here and think like us and talk like us and walk like, you know, walk like us. And so I think that is um, what we even a lot of us can come into agreement with, that you go align with those people and, and, and everyone should do the same. We're trying to get hundreds, maybe thousands of people to agree on the specifics of things. And that is just not going to work. And, you know, that's all I'm going to really say, um, say to that. Um, uh, okay. Um, so I just want to say again, thank you for everyone. If I, do, I didn't shout you out, I appreciate you for being here. Um, it was a wonderful conversation. Again, I want to thank you, A, for letting us, you know, talk about, you know, like review. I don't know what to say. React. I guess we were reacting to your, um, the last live. You know, I always um, appreciate having conversations on your channel and I, I appreciate how you navigate. So again, I want to say thank you um, to Abe. I want to say thank you to uh, my brother Talawa and to Sister Ama, thank y'all for being here. I always enjoy your perspectives. Um, and to my sister Hanifa, as always, you know, you do what it do. So um, I want to thank you for coming here um, and uh, just having the conversation as well. Now, I just want to say this, kind people, I do not plan on having this submission conversation again. Um, I don't want to. Um, you know, if it comes up in conversation when I'm um, in conversation, you know, I might talk about it. 
But I just, I think that I have said all I can say. And I just would say, hey, just go look at this conversation. And um, that's it. I just don't, it's just not a part of my vocabulary. Um, I don't plan on it ever being a part of my vocabulary. And, you know, leave all your comments about that. Um, I may respond. I may not. I just don't. I don't have anything else to say about it. I mean, I just don't. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for being here. I love y'all. I appreciate you. Um, and just look out for the next conversation here at My Eyes Speaks. But with that being said, that is it. That is tonight's show. Peace, everyone. I'll see you next time.